going on, y'all? It's Mills here, Pub Sports Radio. Do you guys want to challenge the personalities here at Pub Sports Radio? Do you guys think you're better than them at entering in your MMA predictions and picks? Would you want to get paid for it? $100? Here's how you do it, man. You sign up right here at the link below. It's just this easy. PubSportsRadio.com. Enter your email. Pick your weekly picks. That's it. Oh, and you get bonus points if you can predict how they're going to win and what round. Every single week, a new winner is getting crowned. So every Saturday on Pub Sports Radio. So come on and check us out. You can win $100 just for signing up. Only thing you need to do is see if you can beat us here at Pub Sports Radio by entering your UFC predictions and picks weekly. Do it. I hear you. See you guys soon. Locker Room Podcast, live in your stereo, live in your television, live everywhere. We're back at it. Who we got rocking with us today? It's about 914 in Cali, my way, but I ain't alone. Yo, it's Big Show Picks coming in from Northern Michigan. It is currently 1214. What's up, everybody? Can't wait for this fucking card. Great card. Great fighters. I'm in the sesh with the boys. Who else is there? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Just my two cents. Checking in from the Eastern Shore of Maryland. Got a big old card. It's pretty stacked, and I am very pumped to talk about it with you, gentlemen. And uh, yeah, man, let's fucking get this shit. Yes, sir. We're at, well, I'm sure we're going to have Billy hopping in whenever he gets done packing groceries and shit. But uh, all right, let's start the podcast off with a little recap of last week. TC, I'll start with you first. But shout out to Axel Martinez for winning the pub contest last week. Fucking cruise and score, dude. 755. Breaking news, don't bet main events. TC, how'd you end up wrapping last week up? So, yeah, congrats to the champ. Uh, I, uh, I I actually didn't lock in my topology picks, and I didn't lock in my pub picks until, like, and so, womp, womp, womp. I had no fucking chance at winning that contest. But, uh, yeah, still looking for that fourth victory. Um, yeah, dude, shout out to Cornholio, man. Um, Nora yeah. Cornole, right off the bat, I'm, I'm kicking myself for not planting my flag. That would have been a nice little uh, – sound bite there but yeah she saved my night uh i got burned on everything else but i did have a winning night because of her um and it was uh it was good to just just win right off the rip and just uh kick back and enjoy it but yeah it was all right mills i know you missed the first couple fights did you end up how'd you end up doing in the contest last week and how'd you end up doing with your bets uh not that good can you guys remind me who the main event was nope i don't even remember yeah, see, it's, it's that type of week for me. But, uh, you know, we started off pretty decent. But I think as the main card went, uh, things started slowing down a little bit. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not lying. I honestly don't remember who the main event was last week. Uh, it's just <laughs> just that I'm not, I'm not fucking lying. Can, can somebody please tell me? I had to think about it, dude. It was, it was the Allen and Curtis rematch, but I didn't know either. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just All smoked right. half a blunt. So, like, I was struggling, too. Like, I was almost going to go back on the tapology a couple of days. <laughs> Got it. So now that now that reminds me, Allen and Curtis was the main event. Now hear me out. Guess who the co-main event was? Damian Jackson and Alex Hernandez. Hear me out. Guess who the co-main event was for the last fight night card before that? Somebody horrendous and horrible. I think it was Carl Williams versus uh somebody. But um, that's why I don't remember shit. All right. And another reason why I didn't have too many strong plays and bets on that card. Now that we're doing the podcast, I do remember the live stream. So as the live stream was going, I kept telling people, hey, it's just going to be one of those days to where I'm going by fight by fight. You know what I mean? I might have uh, two parlays with one fighter in it. Then by the end of it, you know, put a little bit of money on the other guy just to hedge because I didn't really like the card um, on it at all. Um, so overall, I lost money last week, so I got to get everything back this week. Normally, we lean on you for this, Mill, since you're still on the mic. Um, any news popping up recently? Any uh, you know, fighters removed? Fighters are just added? Anything? Anything with yep. the PFL? I know you did a couple interviews on the PFL joints. Yeah, so you got PFL kicking off their series of fights on Friday, uh, headlong by Impa Kasagni versus Palasi. Um, you got a lot of fighters on that card. You got a Pitbull brother on there. Uh, you got the homie Solomon Renfro on there. Uh, you got some good fights on there. You got Clay Collard on the card. Um, it's going down Friday in Vegas. Then you got UFC 300 right around the corner. Um, so I was able to talk to some of the fighters during media. Yesterday, I talked to Rob Wilkinson, Tom Breeze, Patricky uh, as well. Uh, I have an interview lined up with Solomon Renfro, but just didn't uh, connect on the same times. But we'll, we'll get it in. Uh, besides that though, yeah, man, a few fighters, you know, came and went. Remember Cynthia Calvilla who missed weight last week by three pounds? 
they done got rid of her. They just said, hey, we don't even need you back for your services. You're, 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 you're no longer with the UFC. So she got cut uh, from the UFC. Uh, besides that, though, I mean, I don't know if it's MMA news, but I mean, OJ Simpson died today. Pause. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Mm, okay, cool. Just thought I'd mention that. But yeah, uh, besides that, though, um, you know, um, yeah, a lot of entertaining stuff going on, man. UFC St. Louis. Uh, you know, they're still trying to see if Joaquin Buckley's going to get put on that card. Buckley. Uh, UFC Saudi Arabia, though. Oh, my gosh. The fights that are being announced for that card are crazy. Jared Condonier versus Imavov. Uh, there's so many other fights uh, on there. I'm just not looking at the, the, the pages right now. But, yeah. And guess what? In other MMA news, it looks like Kayla Harrison going to be able to – wait, wait, wait. We don't know if she's going to be able to make weight. We still got to wait. 135 is tough. I mean – Damn, bro! Like Kayla Harris, she's gonna do it. Like I feel like she's got two fights this weekend, and she might ooh, lose one of them right ooh, off the bat. So, so hear me on that real quick. I've been watching her in media day, and to me, it's like this. Don't take it the wrong way, uh, because she's a real emotional person. But the the amount of weight that she lost already, like, like, like it looks like somebody's not healthy or a smoker. You know how like your your face, you see your bones and everything, and you're just like, wait, what, what's up with this person? Are they? But it's really just because. She has so much muscle and nothing to lose to where her at this weight class, man, like her bone definition and her face looks like you can see everything, you know, like, yeah, it's, it looks like Skeletor a little bit like TJ Dillashaw when he cut all the way down, but she's there. And, um, I'm not going to put too much into her actual, uh, making weight thing. I just wanted to, you know, make that a little segment on there, but I actually think uh, when it comes down to it. That's going to hinder the way that she actually fights. She's used to being a lot stronger, 155 compared to being 135. Man, and you're cutting all that muscle and strength. And she's looking a little bit scrawny, but still muscular with the veins, cardiovascular. But Taylor Harris at 155 is bulky, looking strong, looking like a linebacker, looking like she just do deadlifts in the morning while she's eating hard-boiled eggs. Taylor Harris at 135. Like I said, bro, she looking like she like one of those kids to where one of those people be like, hey, do I want to leave my kids with her? I don't think so. But shout out to her though. Uh she's a <laughs> hell of a <laughs> He said, nah, I ain't leaving my kids with him. <laughs> well, speaking on all the events that you got coming up, all the Saudi Arabia and all the, the play cards that are being built. My question is for the podcast and you guys, what is the UFC doing with the order to this fight? Like I know there's a bunch of people on here that are, you know, well named, but Two former champions to start off the fucking prelims. What do you guys think about the card setup? And do you think they could have set it up a little better for a fan experience? Uh, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me start it off because I know two saying he just sitting back drinking his hot coffee right now, just waiting to rip. So, yeah, in this one, they're doing everything right. Hear me out. All right. Pay per view event. What do you want? You want your biggest names on that event, right? So I had a big problem with putting Bo Nickel on there over other fighters that I think should have been on there. But those fighters that we're talking about should have been on there, they already had their chance. They already been seen. They already been watched. They already had the eyes on them, okay? Are they moving the needle like that? Any of the fighter that's fighting on the prelims, let me ask you, are they moving the needle like that? Is people tuning in to see my boy Rakish fight? No. Is people box office and, and paying $60 to see Yuri Prokoska fight? Nah. Is people doing that with the former champion, Aljamain Sterling? Great fighter? I don't think so. Is people even doing that with Ronaldo Marcano, one of the guys that's deadly on the mic? Nah, not really. The only fight that I believe that should have been on there is the Jalen Turner fight and Marcano fight. You want to know why, Two Cent? Why is that, brother? Because this guy, Jalen Turner, I think he has 12 fights in the UFC. You want to know how many of them been on pay-per-view events? How many? Nine. So Damn! that's a guy right there that's prime time to where everybody do want to see those type of fights and fighters. So I do believe that that should have been on the main card to where it just, I don't care about the hours, the, the time length. You there got to be a way you can just squeeze it on. Because you know that shit ain't going the distance. I get it. You, you think need he's getting uh, that kind of that kind of shine just because his body type being the John Jones, Anderson Silva, you know, kind of body type? 
definitely. So that, that that's what gets you that those looks. Same thing that got Curtis Millender those looks and opportunities early on. He just didn't uh, uh, execute all the way. He did against Tiago Alves, uh, but he didn't keep it up in the UFC. Jalen Turner did. That's why his first fight ever uh, in the UFC, it was on the Conor McGregor versus Khabib card versus Vicente Luque at, minus, at, at, at welterweight at 170. He doesn't fight at 170. That's why, because the way he looks and everything is a prestige to him. They want to see that it factor in the octagon. And he comes out there and performs. Um, you know, it's 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 a mystique to it. You know, it is what it is. But Bo Nickel being on the card is warranted, though, folks. This is the guy that people's talking about and people want to see. And you know, so I, I think by having Bo Nickel on the card is right because that's the direction of the UFC as a business aspect. I just think that there is one other fight that they could have just threw on there and said, hey, don't worry. We know this shit ain't going longer than seven minutes. So we just going to pull out some quick shit and give you guys six fights on the on the uh, main, main pay-per-view or something like that or seven or ho however many it is, they could have did it because they know these title fights. You got three title fights, right? So you got to give them 25 minutes, right? But we goddamn know that Justin Gaethje fight ain't going 25 minutes. We know Jamal Hill and Poton ain't going 25 minutes. We know Zayla Wee and Yanni Shazan is not going no 25 minutes. So they could have did it, man. Right. DC, what are your thoughts on the card and the fight order itself? Dude, it's funny. When uh, going into fight week, I was trying to find a hot take. I was talking about this last night with Aaron, too. Like, I think it's fucking dank, dude. I think the card is awesome. I think the order is awesome. I think it's a great card for casual and hardcore fans. Like, as a hardcore UFC fan, it's stacked, dude. Um, yeah. But trying to think about it from, like, a casual fan's perspective or maybe just, like, in general terms, like, is the card order, like, appropriate? Funnily, funny enough, like, I agree with what most, most of what Mills said. And, like, it, 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 it's kind of right that, like, yeah, like, there are – the fighters on the main card are there for a reason. Even Bo Nickel, like me personally, if there was one fight that you could maybe like put the prelim headliner, it would be that. But I understand what they're trying to do uh, with that. But while Prohaska and Rakic might not move the needle per se, like that, that being on the prelims is kind of crazy. That's easily a fight night headliner. And dude, the early prelims is a fight night main card. That's kind of crazy, dude. Like, I know that, yeah, like like Mills said, like Turner and Moicano compared to the fighters on the main card, yeah, they're not really like moving the needle, but for a prelim fight, either Turner's gonna win in crazy fashion, or if Moicano gets it done, you're gonna you're gonna hear a nasty promo cut on the early fucking prelims of a paper of a of a big card. So yeah, man, I uh, I, I can't hate on the fucking card order or none of it. Um, but yeah, that's my two cents on it. I think it's fuck I think it fucking rocks. No hot takes here. Has the needle moved too far on Bo Nickel? He is, he is what? I think he's the first fight on the main card, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Minus 2,500. What, I mean, the odds are saying that he's got to win like 198 times out of 100. <laughs> 198 times. Like, it, it just, is it gone too far? Like, you have to almost just take shots on the other side and just fucking roll the dice, right? Just find something to have fun with on the fight, cause yeah, and you're not putting him in a parlay, even though it's probably the, one of the safest parlay pieces on the card. You don't have to roll the dice like crazy either to like to take a little stab on on fucking Cody Brundage. Like, yeah, There's I think Bo four digits on the other side, plus but the, four digits. I mean, yeah, exactly, dude. And like prohibitive favorite, you want to talk about prohibitive favorite? That is this fucking fight to a t man even i just looked at nickel inside the distance it's minus 900 even that's not doing much for your parlay so it's just like with a card like this it's so fucking stacked like there are plenty of spots to get greasy so it's like it just pass or or take a little stab on brundage it's ufc 300 maybe have a little you want to have a little fun take, take throw throw a fucking dart on cody brundage you're getting insane odds on a little bit of a step up of competition so yeah to answer the question absolutely it's gotten stupid is uh no, you think Cody is a little bit of a step up? And what do you think on this number? What do you like? I mean, when we're talking about numbers, let's relate it to the stock market real quick. I mean, it if you guys got a guaranteed option to, to get you a guaranteed back return on your investment, and it was a little bit more than what you could afford, would you still try to do it? The average man wouldn't, but the person who got money and can afford it. 
wouldn't even think about it. They asked Bo Nickel, minus 2,500, is that good money? He said, oh, man, that's good money. That's real good money, man. Like, you might as well get I it now. I want to see his tickets then. I just want to see his ticket. Like, so, minus, let me ask you, minus 2,500? Is minus 1,500 good? Because that's what he's been on my personal book all week. Hasn't moved up. Hasn't moved up for minus 1,500. So, these minus 2,500s that he's at? I mean, I guess they're the public books and stuff like that, but my book, you've been having them at minus 1500 That's all day. He's trying to get you in there. I mean, he's, trying to, get you to, he's getting, trying to get you to take that and some plus money prop to get plus money and both of them have a chance, you know, and that and the plus money that lose for you. And you're yeah. not going to get much with it. You know, you're not going to get much with a fuck of 1500. But sometimes when you, when you put your money in those stocks, man, they look better than they are, and then that next day come out, and that, that, that value drop. Cody Brunish, I think, is a step up. He said it like this in the media day, too. Oh, Nichols never been hit. Like, so I just think, you know, those odds are off. Like, how are you guys betting on that against a fighter who's never been hit? And it, it is what it is. Like, you, you were a wrestler your whole life. You know, like, getting punched in the face is different. Getting punched in your nose and can't breathe is way different. Fucking slap guillotine down. And fucking right. guard guillotine. <laughs> Getting punched in your nose fucking sucks. It hurts a lot. And if it's being done by a UFC level fighter and a big fucking die, like Cody Brundage is a big old lug, dude. Right. And the best line you can get on Bo Nickel anywhere on a public book, like like a, mm-hmm. a, a domestic yeah. one, is minus 2,000. Uh-huh. Damn. Okay. So let me ask you then. I'm getting value. I beat the line. <laughs> yeah. If you're booking, <laughs> I, I mean, if it's minus 1,500 and it ain't yeah. it, like that nowhere else. So yeah, I guess you did. But guess what? I don't give a fuck about that line. I don't hear the bet shit like that. You add that onto your parlay, what are you getting? You're probably getting 11 cents more on your fucking dollar. Get the fuck out of here with that. Hey, but Cody Brennage is live, folks. Why? It's an MMA fight, man. Like, anything can happen in there. And when I say anything can happen, like, you never know who's going to be on the screen. You know what I mean? Who's going to parlay Bo Nickel? Because... I, I need to ask this guy this because minus 2,000 on the books is high. Minus 1,500. Billy Briz, what you doing with it? What up, Billy? What up? What up, boys? Uh, you know, running a little bit late. But um, you, up, this is one, man. What's up, Billy? Call me, call me crazy. Uh, I saw Danny tweet out, and I'm kind of with him, bro. I think Bo Nickel could – the only way to get value on it is his first-round knockout prop. It's at plus 210. Um, looking at the odds for the different method of victories – I feel like the knockout prop isn't priced accordingly to the rest of the market because him to win by submission is basically even odds at minus 115 and the knockout props plus 155, but his round one knockout prop is 200 or more and the round one sub is damn near even odds. So I, I feel like you either play the fight to end by submission and get the Cody Brundage upside as well, or you try to gamble and get Bo Nickel round one by now because i mean we all know how fucking cody brundage fights he's gonna pull guillotine um if he pulls guillotine when bo nickel tries to take him down he's gonna get top position and at that point anything is possible if you have top position and advantageous positions i feel like you could definitely get him out of their damage on top yeah i feel like uh, the safest bet on the whole fight is probably fight doesn't go to decision right like whatever if you're if you're looking for a small parlay piece fight doesn't go to decision you get the cody brundage side you get all of the go step further, go under one and a half or something like that. I mean, fight not yeah, to go to distance. Yeah, fight not to go to distance. I was gonna say, yeah, that's gonna be like exactly like a stupid cr- prop, but like, yeah, under, uh, under, you know, two, two and a half is like the the way to go. Under one and a half, I, uh, and it's just one of those things. Like, I think it's Cody Brunich is tough though. You know, he's not like oh, just hit me, beat me up. Like, you know, he's been in there with some people, so he's not going to look for a way to quit in this fight, you know? So I could I could, I could, could see it maybe going to that beginning, you know, second round. I do agree with Billy, though. The take on this fight and the take that I'm doing once my bookie comes out with the props on Friday, I'm playing Bo Nickel inside the distance. A lot of people is going to be going with that first round finish. So, I mean, the best bet is probably just to be Bo Nickel wins in the first round, so that way you don't even got to predict the uh, way of a victory, but you're not going to get the plus money odds. It's minus two forty though, Mills. Can I can I ask y'all something? Would do y'all think uh, Brundage has a better chance in starching Nickel early or maybe pushing him the distance? 
because I, his because best Brun, shot is pulling the Brunton round one. Br- yeah, ours, Brunton guillotine. round one on FanDuel is plus thirty four hundred. That's all I'm saying. I, I like so I, I I think it's that. I think it's a. Let me come out here because I know I'm gonna get finished no matter what. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna come out here with two and a half minutes. <laughs> of my best shit. No, for real, of my best shit, and I'm gonna put everything on them. I'm gonna put them under this pressure. You know, so and I actually think Cody Brunish would would come out there with that instead of being like, all right, cool. Let me um let me try not to get my back taken or let me try not to get taken down. I think he's gonna come out there literally like bone rush him to where it's like, oh shit. And that's how he gets he's taken down though, bro. He's gonna go out there. He's gonna go across the cage, throw some shit. We're gonna see Bo Nickel get punched in the face. Yeah, but we hey, uh, hey Mills ain't Mills ain't far off because you remember fucking Ben Askren's ass. Remember what Masvidal did to him and that similar type fucking. I think yeah, you guys bro, are you're talking about your hey Maslow and Cody Brundage, bro. I don't even think, to be honest with you, if Cody Brundage, I'll just say the mindset. Those, you, you if he know, didn't get those illegal shots taken to the back of the head by Jacob Malcoon, he wouldn't be in the UFC right now. I, I don't, I don't think that Brundage is winning, but I think that his best chance to win is to just go, go buck wild early and fucking bum rush him, like like Mills was saying, and just fucking try and spark him. I mean, he, Brundage does hit hard. You know, Bo Nickel is a man. I know some some people think he's the uh, the second coming of Christ Almighty, but yeah, dude, if you're gonna have a little fun, why? I mean, the odds are like like Big Show was saying, like this motherfucker's gonna win 198 times out of 200 times. Like, uh, no, 198 like, out of 100. 100. Out of 100, good, good gosh, Almighty, that dude, that's even crazier. It's just the like, even if Cody Brun, I, I think the only way there's two ways Cody Brunage can win. By flash knockout, but his best shot is shit, man. You get to take it down, you better pull that gilly, man. Nah, <laughs> you never bro, know. I mean, the way he's gonna win is he just fucking picks him up and throws him out of the ring. That's how he wins. Nah, yeah. That's <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that, the only that way you can win this. Fight. Shit that but he is allowed to do that too. So that dumb Lou, guillotine top of air is that. Doing Lou, Lou was joking last table. night. Lou was joking last night that he's gonna fucking Cody's gonna hurt him and pull Gilly, and then and then Bo's gonna end up on top and smash him probably. I could I could see that too, Lou, but like shouts, yeah. to, shouts to Lou Betty, man. Uh, free my man Lou Betty on Twitter. Yeah, shout out to Lou. He, he's you, free. Man, he's, he's got a he's got a proxy account. He's tweeting from now. <laughs> Pay per view time, boys. We got three solid women fights to discuss and bet. Mills, give me your favorite spot so far on these first three women's fights. Man, so to start off with the first woman fight, Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. I'm going with Marina Rodriguez in there. I think her reach is going to be a little bit too much. I can see her using her footwork to uh, stay on the outskirts of the cage. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen Jessica Andrade sometimes looking a little bit off when she can't connect with those short hooks, you know, pouncing around, dancing around. She's not in rhythm. She's not engaged to fight all the way. I started off this week thinking that Andrade was the spot. Andrade's the spot. I, I'm not mad at it. Minus 130. She does have ways to win where takedowns and stuff, but... I just got to go with what I've been seeing as of late. Remember, man, it was just like two fights ago. Everybody was throwing Jessica Andrade out the window saying that she's done. She should be cut from the UFC because she's fighting multiple times and losing to everybody, right? So I could just see a path into victory to where Marina Rodriguez goes out here and surprises people. Um, It was one of my dark horses in the women's division a long time ago before the Tracy Cortez, Casey O'Neill's. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my gut. And uh, you know they got they got this far right now on this biggest card. I think Marina Rodriguez wins by decision. I'm gonna take the plus you know, money. In the you know what's the craziest part about that fight? The over under on that fight over two and a half is minus 166. But if you look at the method of victory props, Marina Rodriguez is actually lower odds to win by decision than Jessica Anaraj. I feel like the bookies are kind of like. Telling you, Marina Rodriguez is probably going to win by decision. She shared decision props at plus 220. Jessica Anaraj's prop is at plus 240. So I, I feel like they're telling you, like, uh, this goes 15 minutes. It's probably Marina. Yes, sir. Uh, TC, what are your thoughts? I agree on the fight. I'm on the other side, but of all the fights on this card, I, this is the one I'm most interested in. I'm super biased here, man. I'm a, a homie Jessica is, like, my favorite chick fighter. I, I'm picking her to win, but I, dude, my fucking little baby nuts have not dropped on this. And, like, I'm not going to war. Like, cra- every time I get fucking mouthy and fucking get cocky about uh, what Jessica is going to do, she loses. But I think she actually can win a decision. I think Marina is more likely to win a decision based on her volume and, like, her being the more accurate striker. That's one thing I can say about about homie Jessica is, like, she's got a ton of power, but the accuracy isn't always there. I'm picking Jessica to win by knockout, though. Um, I think Marina is 
a good striker. She's the better striker, but I, I think there's a difference in power level. But I'm not confident that Jessica can can will win the decision. So unless she knocks her out, I don't know, man. Like I I thought about maybe like making Jessica my play my flag, but no, I I'm gonna give Marina the respect here and just say this is a good fight. And I'm just yeah, even as a biased like Andrade stand, like I'm pumped for it. Like I'm nervous because I know that it's gonna be a good fight and it's gonna be close, and I'm definitely the most excited for this one. But yeah. Riding with uh, riding with Jessica this week, but not not quite planning the flag. Billy, I didn't get a chance to ask you what is your favorite women's fight on the card, and you just kind of had like input on the card, and I kind of skipped over you. We got two minutes to the thirty minute mark, and a perfect timing to go into the fight goes the decision. Do you have a favorite fight on a women's fight on this card, Billy? One eight hundred fraud alert. Yeah, I'm calling. Uh, you know, she's one of my favorite fighters, but there's levels to this shit, and there's going to be levels shown in this one. Holly Holm, man, the way you've been fighting, you ain't the same girl that we see in the highlight tapes knocking huh. girls out on the feet, kickboxing. Huh. The way she's huh. been fighting, she's been pushing girls up against the cage. Huh. Bro, fuck it. I'm going to say it, man. Kayla Harrison's going to finish Holly Holmes, and she's going to make a – She Dana ain't paid Kayla Harrison on UFC 300 to buy her out from her PFL contract for her to win a fucking decision. I think she's going to get this submission in the later rounds. Round two, three, sub, Kayla Harrison, plus 650, man. Book it. Operator, 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 operator. Uh, before you before you hang up, um, I just wanted to know, um, what round again? Rounds <laughs> two or three submission on FanDuel in the submission uh, combo props, plus 650. 50 for Kayla Harrison. I think she gets it done in rounds two or three, bro. There's levels to this shit. If you're getting submitted by MSB up against the cage and we're cashing on MSB sub props, I, I'm picking the fucking Olympic judo fucking wrestler, man. Kayla Harrison, there's levels to this shit. I love Holly Holm. She's one of my favorite fighters, but there is levels to this shit when it comes to the ground game. Kayla Harrison by submission. I I'm still so love that. Guy. I still love that little clip. <laughs> That's my favorite clip of all time. All right. Now we're moving on to the rolling through the card, whether the fight's going to go the distance or finish. If you have something to say and you want to talk about a specific fighter, feel free. If we fly over your plant the flag fighter, your 1-800 fraud alert, or even if you have a blacklist fighter on the card, go ahead and let it rip. Uh, first fight, two former champions, TC. Does this card hit three bells? Absolutely not. Uh, this is the curtain jerker. This is a really crazy fight to be the first one, but it is the first fight. This will be the first flag of UFC 300 for the Locker Room Talk podcast, and uh, make sure y'all download it anywhere you can. Yeah. Um, now, like I said, I, I said this before the podcast started. I've been saying it all week. This is a card for me where I'm going to be super biased and I'm not like, I don't have action all over this card, but I'm just kind of picking my spots and uh, I will acknowledge my bias here. Uh, I'm a Davison Figueredo stand. I have been for a while, uh, but it's for a reason. It's because the dude is absolutely fucking ruthless. He has a ton of power and uh, I really like him at 135. and uh, I think he's going to knock out Cody Garbrandt. Like that's not a super duper hot take. Uh, he's a minus three Oh five favorite, but I think he's going to cover that line when he chins him. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to like shit on Cody. Like he's a he's a good fighter, former champion, but his fatal flaw is his durability. And like even in a decision, man, even if I think Figgy's going to knock him out, but I think he can win a decision, too, man. I just think that Figueredo's the side. I think he is going to make a tear through 135 and Cody Garbrandt's going to be the first step. I, Rob Font was the first step. Um, if you look at how Cody fought Rob Font and how Figgy did, it's just I, I think it's going to be bad. Like, yeah, Figgy's a little bit older, but like he's. He, he don't turn, what is it? He, I, I think he's, what, 36? He don't turn 37 until December, so he's still a young 36, and that power ain't going nowhere. I think he's going to be much health, healthier um, moving forward at this weight class, and I think he knocks Cody out. So let's go. Flag planted, Davidson Figueredo. Let's fucking go. Let's go. TC plants his flag on Davidson Figueredo. Mills, what are your thoughts on the fight? Do we get three bells? Yeah, man, we good three bells, man. Um, nice flag there, you know. Starting off the podcast, you guys gotta gotta guys remember one thing with me, man. I got three G's, and um, 
unfortunately, I'm sticking to him on this one. You know, this 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 podcast, this this little UFC 300 event is a little bit different for me, man. I said I'm going with everybody that I was really fans of, you know, biasing and shit like that. And like, y'all ain't got no love for Cody Garbrandt. I mean, come on now, man. One of his I times to have in the title, he was one of the smoothest guys in the cage, man. Like the oh, performance man. against Dominique Cruz, what he did, come on now. We can't take that for granted. The losses, let's just speak about him for, for one. He has a couple of bad losses, right? A loss to Pedro Munoz. That one's bad. Lost to TJ Dillashaw. Nothing wrong with that. Lost to Rob Font. At the time, you know, Rob Font was making accolades and climbing up. The, the loss was bad against Kai Carl France. That one is like, uh, all right, maybe He's it's going low. through that divorce, though, bro. Ex my mom, my, 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 that's his, took the words out my mouth. You know, had a lot of stuff going on in his life, you know. Uh, just got married uh, when he got the belt. Got divorced. Probably had a kid, you know. Um, was going out to uh, Thailand, training out there. He had his own personal barber he used to fly out that was out here from the uh, Santa Ana area in Orange County. Shout out to him, man. Um, I'm going with Cody Garbrandt in this one, man. I Mills, you literally said you were going with Figgy before this podcast started. My, like, my like literally, like, right before my you're point. like, I was like, oh, you know, I got a few flag planet fighters I'm yes. going to play my flag on. And you were like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Figgy. So, yeah, that's all good. And now you yes. switch up. On, are you planning your flag on Cody? No, I thought we said we weren't going to do that. I thought we said we weren't going to like go against each other on flag fighters and like I love how you switch up like right when the podcast starts. <laughs> it's just hilarious. I, this one is different, so that's what I'm trying to tell you guys, man. I'm going with the guys and the people that I was fans of a lot longer and stuff. So in this one, I'm just going with Wishy Cody Washy. So you were bullshit. So you were just so you were bullshitting before the podcast. Nah, not at all. I think Figgy's gonna. You, you know, literally just switched. Like you literally decided to switch. Like just in the moment now. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I'm going, I told you this. Uh, this podcast is different. Uh, okay. It's not the typical one. <laughs> I'm not going with my picks. Look, look, look. Hear me out on this. I'm not. This going is with really my, corny. Yeah, I'm not going with my picks. I'm going with my guts and my guys to where I was fans of in this one. So yeah, I think. Um, I think Cody Garbrandt. So it is, wait, so this is this is going to be your pick or it's not? You're you are picking Cody or you're not picking? Cody? <laughs> you just said you just said I'm not going with my pick. I'm going with my guy. So like, what what are you talking about right now? Because my pick <laughs> before the podcast was Figgy, right? Right. Yeah, who's your pick, pick right? going to be? Like, wh who are you picking in this fight, Mills? So you're picking Cody. Yeah, I told okay. you by decision. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Weird. Uh, like very Cody weird, Cody very weird really. you just like decided to switch it up just to, no, just like to fucking Eddie. do it. Yeah, yeah, man. I told you this podcast is different, man. I'm doing I'm be you're gonna get a lot of these. Just just know you're 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 not gonna get what you expect on this one. All right. So yeah, uh, ringer alert. Okay, so yeah, you're not gonna get the, the typical Zayway Lee minus 475 from this guy on this podcast. Sorry, you're not, you know. <laughs> okay, I like the energy, <laughs> Billy. Uh, I, 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 I hate to say it, bro, but I kind of agree with Mills, bro. How the fuck is Davidson Figueroa minus three hundred going up a weight class? I think Cody Garbrandt could throw more volume if this hits the judges' scorecards. It's just that durability of Cody Garbrandt. You can't always count on that. Granted, his last you couple just, of y'all just didn't watch the Rob Font fights at all. No, nah, it's just like when the when has David when has Figgy looked minus three hundred in his last three fights like bro it's been bad for him you don't man. think he looked like minus 300 against rob font he beat the christ out of him billy he beat the christ out of him, but it's no offense but it's but, rob font yeah the rob font that beat cody a better <laughs> version of rob font <laughs> yeah, but i'm just saying though man like rob font is good not great like he's a great gatekeeper like yeah you know, and, he, and that he, guy he, beat cody <laughs> And that yeah, guy be scary Garth. ass, no chance. You see, you gonna make me fucking yeah. shit on Cody. I it didn't is want to do UFC three hundred. Shitty as fuck. Dude. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. And Davidson now, hits like a truck, and he's more durable. You're good. I, I'm gonna. I'll tell you what. I will. I always eat my crow. But I'll tell you what. If Davidson wins this fight, I'm gonna clown both of you two fucking I'm not, big I'm time. I'm not saying he's on, not gonna on win, the fucking bro. stream during my show. Oh man, y'all are gonna fucking get it if Davidson wins this You're fight. But don't worry. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I will eat shit. Two cents. Are you parlaying them at minus three twenty? I are, I parlayed it. Yes, I am. I yes. do, I played my flag. Did y'all not hear me? Yes, <laughs> I am. I parlayed him. I parlayed him at minus two ninety. I'm parlaying him. I'm going to parlay him at minus three ten. Yes, Davison Figueroa will be of my leg in the in the fucking park. And look, look, look. You want to you want to know something else? 
I parlayed him too, minus 290. So, yes, yes, I bet on Figgy. So, yes. Just basically but... don't listen to him because Mills is going to be all over the place. He's going to, he's going to, like, he's the <laughs> ultimate fence rider. He's going to take action on both sides. He's going to pick both sides. He'll pick one side here, one side there. Oh, I'll just decide to pick Cody for this podcast. He'll pick Davison for another one. He'll pick Davison Saturday or something like this is hilarious. I think the best bet on the fight, though, is uh, Figgy to win inside a distance at minus 110. If you're going to play Figgy, I would just bet him inside a distance at minus 110. I mean, you're talking about a minus 110 price tag for a minus 320 favorite, the biggest thing that you would say. I mean, I think he can win a decision, though. Like, if damage is totally – you're telling me over three – if it goes three rounds, you're telling me that Davison isn't going to fucking land the more damaging strikes and, like, dude, dude, he's not a fucking scrub on the ground. Like, if he hurts Cody and he shoots a bad takeout, He's going to get fucking front choked. So my thing is this, though. The, the way you got to look at it is like... Yeah, for a lot of time on his favorite, first fight. For three well, it's because it's two fucking champion. former champions, Mills. No, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's going to be that way. And this card, we're going to end up talking, so... Fight not to go to distance on this fight is minus 182. That's one way to look at it. I, I just don't think they're starting off the first card of the night without a finish. So uh, I, with that being said, I think Figgy wins by nine. What a, what a, what a fucking not great fight, though. What a great fight. We got to plant your flag. We got half a, you know, triple G's from Mills. Um, moving on to the next one. Bobby Green, Jim Miller. Mills, you've been off the mic for a minute, so let's get you back in here. What do you think on this fight? Oh, man, this one's going to be a good one. So this fight was supposed to take place. How many? One, two, three, four times now, man. All type of stuff happened for it not to take place already. Two UFC veterans have been fighting for the promotion forever. Jim Miller fought on UFC 100, UFC 200, UFC 300. Bobby Green's been doing his thing. Just haven't got the same notoriety as, you know, Jim Miller. But Bobby Green is one of those staples in the UFC. Literally, I compared him to the Jim Millers, to the Clay Guidas, to the Max Griffins. Veterans that pretty much, you know, stay around and, you know, still fighting the octagon. Doesn't matter about the wins and losses. And this one opened up at a minus 170 up to a minus 190 in here. Hearing them in media, usually Bobby Green don't go into fights with like a, a, a narrative. But in this one, he said, man, I want to finish Jim Miller. He said the way he's been talking about this fight, saying he didn't want to take this fight. Man, I just put that in my mind as another bullet to shoot out for me. I actually think Bobby Green's live in this spot. Um, you know, I actually bet him at a minus 170 when he did come out. I parlayed him with one other fighter on here. Uh, he didn't look good in his last fight out against Jalen Turner, but this is the thing the way that he got finished is different from getting just chinned and knocked out. You know, he, he got knocked out and was just, you know, taking more damage once he was asleep and stuff off the canvas. That one doesn't get me the same as somebody just getting knocked out in the chin and hitting the floor and being knocked out like, you know, like Johnny, like Jamal Hill did Johnny Walker. You know, so I don't think that that knockout is going to be too much uh, into this fight. Jim Miller does have a pack of victory. He can use those leg kicks, though. If he's able to use those leg kicks, it might, you know, open up some some something for him. But I think Bobby Green's a side in here. I like him to get it done in third round of decision. Uh, but, yeah, I think Bobby Green is as real as it gets. And let's go ahead and get it. Billy, since you're unmuted. Go ahead. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a throwback here. I mean, the last uh, I feel like Bobby Green. It was like Def Texas Bobby Green by decision, and then he started getting some fun fights. Uh, moving up in the, not even moving up in the division. They finally start giving them the respective fights for the popularity that he's always been at. Um, I got Bobby Green to win by uh, decision here at plus one fifty. But um, I would actually wouldn't mind uh going towards round three or decision. Could be a late finish. Um, you could auto bet Jim Miller round two, but I don't think that's the path to victory for here uh for jim miller in this one uh, i actually really like bobby green and fight the start round two at minus 120 uh bobby green round three or decision is at plus 115 and bobby green by decisions plus 154 so uh nice little way to kind of get some juicy props on it more than likely i'll be on the decision prop or bobby green to win and fight the start round two um granted i think jim miller is a live dog but um I like Bobby Green on the bounce back here, man. Uh, I know Jim Miller's everyone's beloved favorite, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind a dog shot on it, but uh, I think Bobby Green's just better everywhere. KC, we get three bells in this one. I agree with both of you. Um, I, uh, I I'm kind of with Mills though. I think Bobby Green knocks out Jim Miller. I, I think there's a lot of recency bias and like, like kind of like, "Atta boy, you can do it, Jim. You made it this far. Like, come on. Like, I not like Jim Miller. Jim Miller's a good dude." Um, but I like Bobby Green too, man. I think uh, these two dudes are both the genuine article. Like what you see is what you get. But yeah, man, I think people are kind of like forgetting. I hear I'm hearing a lot about Jim Miller's power, but that's against a low level of competition. 
I think if anybody's getting knocked out in this fight, it, it's Jim, man. Like I, Bobby Green, I think he's he's going to be a little bit faster. And yeah, I don't normally. Yeah, I would DC? say like a little bit DC. He's going to be ten times faster. In I'm trying to be as respectful as possible, but yes, I agree. He's going to be faster. He's going to be faster. He's a better boxer. And yeah, I think he starches Jim Miller. I, I would normally say yeah, like death taxes Bobby Green by decision, but like. I think people kind of forget that Jim Miller is like he does is not some cardio king man. Like he kind of falls off, and like the pace Bobby works at, like I think he's going to be trying to get some get back after that turn of loss. And yeah, I think he starches him. That's that's why I kind of like the Bobby Green and uh, him to win and fight to start round two because I feel like that first five minutes, you know how Bobby Green fights. He starts talking shit, pointing at the fans and shit like that. UFC three hundred. He's gonna he's gonna giggle it off for the first five minutes, but that it, second round. That second round is going to be highly entertaining. If he sparks him, dude, Bobby's going to get on the mic and say something crazy. That's all I know. What do you think about uh, this Andrade, Marina, Rodriguez fight? Does it go the distance, CC? I'm going to say Andrade by knockout, but not super convicted on it. Else? Uh, it goes the distance. Bailey? I think the totals are connected towards the uh, – that's the victories for broke fighters. Granted, I definitely think Jessica Anarash can win it by decision. But um, if this goes over two and a half, like the books have it lined at at minus 166, I think it's Marina Rodriguez. Uh, way better boxing. And um, I, it, I, I'm a fan of Marina Rodriguez. She's one of my cash cows. Sticker your guys, sticker your girls, sticker your gut. Oh, he busted out a little clipper there, huh? Jalen Turner versus Mike Cano. Mills, I'll start with you on this one. Yeah, I don't see this one going the distance at all. Um, yeah, Jalen Turner got a lot of first round finishes. Uh, Mike Cano has eight wins by rear naked choke. Um, so you know, I, th I, th I think this fight finishes for sure. Jalen Turner's my second leg in that parlay piece I got with Bobby Green. Parlayed that uh, first one that came out. He was a minus two ten. Um, but yeah, I think Jalen Turner gets this one done. Just did an interview with him like two weeks ago too. So yeah, he definitely plans on finishing him in the first round. Fighting another jujitsu specialist like this, we talked about, hey, man, if you finish him, you might level up and get that belt. He said that's definitely on the plate. So I think he's going to go ahead and perform in this one, man. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take Jalen Turner first round finish. DC? Ditto. I think uh, I think Jalen Shadow Realms him. I like Moicano too, man. It, like a Moicano. And, but I agree with what Mill said about it finishing inside the distance too. Like I think if Moicano wins, it is like sneaky, like submission. But yeah, I think Turner sparks him. Billy. Best bet of the card. I'm planting my flag. Best bet of the card this weekend, man. Shouts to Mills for doing the interview, getting the insight. Jalen Turner went inside the distance here at minus 175. It's a binary breakdown, but Turner, all 14 of his wins are inside the distance. Moicano is a great wrestler slash grappler, but I don't think he's going to be able to find the range here on Jalen Turner. When he gets in close, he's going to get clipped. Uh, when Moicano loses, four out of five of his career losses are inside the distance. That ain't the type of recipe to be having against uh, the tarantula here. Uh, Jalen Turner inside the distance. Best bet of the card. There you go, Billy cashing in his plant his bike by a briefcase. Um, not everybody went on this one, right? Yeah, yeah, Billy was the last one. Sadiq Youssef versus Lopez. Billy, why you're selling the mic? Yeah, this is another plant your flag right here. Dog of the week right here. Sadiq Youssef over uh, Diego Lopes. Um, I said Lopes like the fucking Grand Canyon Lopes, but uh, Sadiq Youssef over Diego Lopez here. Uh, levels to this shit. I love Diego Lopez, great story, but um, this is the same as that guy that was getting his ass beat by Joe Anderson Brito and was crying to Dana White. Um, give me Sadiq Youssef. There's levels to this shit. Sadiq Youssef is legit. Um, he shouldn't be the dog wrong, wrong fighter favorite here in this fight. Mills. Man, if we go on to war, let's go ahead and double up, man. It's always good when you got more people in your army and you go into war. You playing flags? Cool. I got your back. Right behind you. You shooting? I got your back. Counterattack. Sadiq Yusuf, plus money odds. Let me tell you a little bit of story about this guy. I seen him fight against Gabriel Bernitas out in Anaheim. I was in the crowd with his mom. Uh, his mom, I seen with the shirt on, Super Sadiq or something, came up. I was like, hey, how you doing? She was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, cool. That's that's dope, man. Long story short, lost the, lost the first round in there. Was able to finish his opponent in there. Been a real fan of this guy, you know. Uh, you know, he's real active in the community, too. But, yeah, man, give me the plus money on here, man. Last time out against Edson Barbosa in a fight to where it looked like he had it. He had it. He had him knocked down. Just didn't get the scorecards right, right? But he did do more volume, I think, in there. I think he could actually win by decision in here or else knock him out. So I'm going to go ahead and go with third round or decision. But, yeah, man, I got your back. Sadiq Yusuf, super Sadiq. Plant your flag. Let's go ahead and go to war with him. 
All right, two guys playing their flags on Sadiq, TC. Well, if we're going to war, then the TC armor will take up the banner for Yusuf. Um, I may, let's make it a triple threat. I think I, you, I, I'm, I'm stunned to see that Yusuf is an underdog here. I think the line should be flipped. Oh, no. it, like, I, I think he knocks him out, honestly. I, I think I think Sadiq I couldn't is agree anymore, TC, bro. I, I, how the fuck is he the underdog in this? Like, what are they telling me? What are, what don't I know? Are they trying to trap people in betting Diego Lopez because uh, – He's Alexa Grasso's jiu-jitsu's coach, and he's been having some crazy finishes in the last. He's been overperforming. I just, I just think Sadiq's a, a little higher level. This ain't yeah, no Pat Sabatini or no Gavin Tucker, man. Like this is Sadiq Youssef. Sadiq Youssef is like, he's not a punk, dude. He's he's a really yeah. fucking good fighter. I think Sadiq Youssef's a top five fighter uh, in the division. You know what I mean? So I think he has those capabilities. He just, you know, even though he's not ranked that high, so I think he has those capabilities of being a top five fighter that could stay around there. Top five, top seven, you know. That, I mean, what way? What on. what ways are they saying that uh, Lopes is going to win this fight? Like, what uh, by knockout, by sub, by decision? What are they saying? By, by minus one forty. Minus one forty. They're saying, like, that like at least two to win. And they're saying the bookies don't know. They're pricing his submission prop and his knockout prop at the same exact odds at plus 320. But the lowest one in method of victory odds is actually Sadiq Youssef by decision at plus 280. Um, his knockout prop is at plus 420, and then um, Diego Lopez plus 500 to win by decision. Uh, the bookies are kind of just, you know, they don't have a lot of information bias. on them. I think it's recency bias, man. I think they saw they saw Lopes or Lopez. It, dude, it fucking might be Lopes. I have no idea how. That's <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> Honestly, but I've, uh, heard, I've heard people I respect <laughs> both on both sides. <laughs> like one's dude, Lopes. seriously. I, I, like, I, I hear that motherfucker getting called again. I'm not going to know what his name is. There are schools of thought that think that is pronounced like this, like fucking surf ninjas. Um, I fucking uh, nah, man. Yeah. I think it's recency bias, man. I think they saw Lopes or Lopez or whatever the fuck knock out Pat Sabatini, and then they saw Sadiq. He fucking got robbed against Edson. I thought he won that fight. That that really pissed me off. But uh, I think that's what it is. They saw well, he lost to Edson and he's old, and they were like, well, he just beat Pat Sabatini. And I, I think that's what it is, honestly. And, uh, and I'll clear it up, man, because uh, I've been a real big fan of uh, Super Sadiq, man. Ever since his fight with Mike Davis on the Contender Series, he was entertaining. Um, but I yeah, keep that, it real. That win's aging nice, too. The, the only kind of, like, two not bad fights, but the, the Andre Feely fight was lackluster. I remember that one. Um, but And the only other fight that he looked bad in was the Arnold Allen fight. Yeah, the Arnold um, Allen fight was bad. But, so, so, and he has two losses in the UFC, Arnold Allen and Edson Barbosa. Two Cent just said he thought he won. I kind of thought he did enough to win, too, but he just slowed down in those fourth or fifth rounds, you know. But, like, he has two losses. So, like, yeah, man. It's just this. He doesn't fight three times a year or four times a year, so you don't see him like that. And when you do see him, it's kind of like, oh, it's against this opponent. Ah, oh, never mind. Now it's against this guy. Sometimes. Well, yeah, he, so, he, he went to decision with Allen, and Allen's only lost to Mavsar and fucking Max Holloway, like, in the right. UFC. So that's not right. a bad loss at all. Right. I think people just people's recency bias seeing Lopes, you know, he has a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, media attention right now with everything that's going on. But besides Mills, that, I'll yeah, take it a step further, bro. Do we not forget that Joe Anderson Brito made this man quit by strikes in that uh, Dana White contender series fight that he lost yeah. in? Dude, yeah. that was one of that was one of the saddest. Dana, I didn't think Dana would ever sign this guy, but then he probably found out he was Grasso's jiu-jitsu coach and gave him a second chance. And like Sadiq could do that same thing. People always get try to get cute with this. Sadiq got knocked out by nobody. Yeah, Lopes or Lopez, he'd been knocked out by a couple fucking nobodies before he got to the UFC. And I think lock, knockout loss number three coming. Man, that's 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 crazy. All right, we all on the dog on this one, man. Big Show, who do you like in this fight? You know what? I'm not going to curse it either way because um, I would probably be on your guys' side. I'm just going to stay off this one as pick-wise and hope that all three of your guys are playing your bags cash. You're no curse, brother. But I'm just I'm just staying away from that. Like I'm, I'm trusting your guys' energy. It will probably be my pick in the the you know the the contest, but I'm gonna probably have to stay off it because all you know going into the thing, um, hearing some other people's perspectives on other shows, kind of got me thinking about Lopes on one side. But I'm not a fan of him at minus one forty. Like I can't figure it's out weird, why he's dude. At minus one forty. I, I don't get it. It's weird. If if Sadiq was the favorite, if it was like flipped, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I think Yusuf wins. But seeing him as an underdog, like, what, dude? That just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm um, I'm better First just standing on the hill watching all three of your guys' plant, you know, plant your flag, and that's a win for me if you guys all fucking hit it. So. The first thing I'll say, though, it's been very rare in the last month with March Madness, fucking 
different horse races, da 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 da. This is the first time that on Saturday, the main focus, or I should say the main bets on the book, is probably going to be on the UFC, man. Well, it's a giant ass fucking car, too. They yeah, I'm just saying, perfect. like, with that said, whenever somebody, whenever, whenever everybody's betting the markets for a particular event, I feel like people are going to lose money. So uh, when you watch different shows and stuff like that, take it with a grain of salt, try to get some knowledge and information about it. But uh, I think a lot of people are going to lose money this week, man. Well, I like the show because it's got a few different voices and we're not all on the same side. So, like, I feel like you get good reads no matter which side you're on with whatever. Well, fight the you best really part, I think the best part about this show is we're not forced to work together. We've been, you, know, me, Billy, and Mills have been on screen, worked together for four years covering all the live events. We know how each other think most of the time on fighting. So, it is a true, like, locker room talk. It's not like a, a normal setup run down the fucking thing. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not it's not set up that way nor do we want it to be that way we want it to be free-flowing and we want you cutting off mills during a you know <laughs> well i mean like I, and people have been responding to it too like the, the people seem to like it so hey uh, the, the dms have been going up we're almost at 25 fucking 100 downloads shout out to everybody that's listening to us on talking hands and the repost on you the youtube channel if you want to catch it later it should be coming on about nine ten o'clock I like it to be the latest show on Pub so we don't get buried by all the other shows that are on Pub. Go check them out as well. Go check out PubSportsRadio.com for the contest. Free every week. All you got to do is make your picks. It saves itself $100 to the top score at the end of the week. We've been doing it for like 65 weeks or 64 weeks. Couldn't be like free or couldn't be easier to sign up for. Yeah, $6,500 yeah, we gave away on a contest. We like also have the NHL it. playoff contest coming up where it's kind of set up like a daily fantasy style where you're going to be able to draft your players under a salary cap, and those are the players that you have for the playoffs. Uh, I can't wait for that uh, competition to come out. Make sure you check out PubSportsRadio.com slash contest. Yeah, for all the merch, too, um, same place, PubSportsRadio.com. we got a couple other outlets like Teesprings. If you're watching the video on YouTube, you'll see it in the tab underneath Teesprings. It has a couple of T-shirts and stuff. And if you want personal merch for the, the, the this show in particular, go ahead and just DM me on Twitter, and I'll send you the, the, the link to that. But moving on to this one, we got kind of a barn bird. We got, what, 42-year-old Holly Holmes versus Kayla Harrison at 135. Who wants to take this one off first? I'm not going to pick and put somebody on the spot. Who I'll go. I'll go. 10-year ten ten age gap. Uh, fucking Dana gave her a fucking bag to be on this card. Kayla Harrison by subs round two or three plus 650. But if you had to say fight goes or doesn't go, I mean, two chicks, man, more times than not, you would say it goes. But I would not be shocked if Kayla Harrison gets Holly home the fuck up on out of here. And no. that's one of my favorite fighters. Yeah, Holly Holm got signed to a five-fight extension like two or three fights ago. And it was because they wanted for Kayla Harrison at the time. They were in negotiations, free agent stuff. They didn't work out that route, you know. Um, when it's all said and done, yeah. Kayla Harrison inside the distance is the way to go in this one. I think she's going to get it done uh, first round, uh, first round or late second round or early second round, I want to say on there. Uh, last time she was able to use elbows was Invicta. Go go Google the pictures for that. Left the girl all bloody. That is fucking nutty. You know, so um, she's been getting better, you know, uh, setting up takedowns, going for single legs, body legs, body locks, not just going for those judo type flows, th throws and stuff like that. The striking though sucks, man. Striking sucks. So I'm trying to tell you right now. If Kayla Harrison tries to stand here and literally throws a one-two, a one-two, and then another one-two with Holly Holm, he's going to get Ronda Rousey head kicked and knocked out. So I, I, can see, I can see a path to victory where Holly Holm stays on her feet, stays on the outside of the cage, and just throws these high kicks and moves so quick, moves so quick, jab, 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 move, move, move. And Kayla Harrison might not be used to that. You know, it might look like the like like Holly Holmes she fighting scared. American top team, stop it. Okay, okay. But They're bringing it, in prospects every day. Pro training, bro. The level of competition that Kayla Harrison fought is laughable. You can't, but whenever we do this, right? Whenever we do this, when a fighter goes from a new promotion or, or from another promotion into the UFC and it's their first fight, everybody talks about their level of competition. We did it with MVP. We did it with the dude from uh, PFL that fought in the whatever. I'm telling you, bro, level of competition doesn't matter. It's, it's all about the skill set. What's the skill set? When you look at Kayla Harrison's last three fights, bro, those are all showcase fights. So, like, there isn't a lot of, like, Who is it against? Promotion. Who is it against? 
It was against what? Aspen Ladd, Larissa Pacheco, and Martina Janarova. The Aspen Ladd one was a showcase. Huh? Those are showcase fights? That's a show. No, the, the Aspen Ladd one I, was I a showcase. I don't get what your, what your point is Larissa with Pacheco. her last three fights. I'm He's just trying saying. to make it seem like her last Aspen, fight. No, let me finish. Fit. Let me fucking finish the Aspen Lab fight, showcase fight. Larissa Pacheco, she fought her Cry. three times. Martina Jandaroba, not a fight she's getting up for, man. Uh, I just feel like this is a different energy, a different aura. This is not the same Kayla Harrison we've seen in the last year. She just got paid. A, she she got always paid a bag, but this you, is you're, you're talking about. She just got paid. What are you talking about, bro? She got she got two three million dollars already from PFL for her contracts and for winning it. I and said you know it's not only about paid, the pay. This is for legacy. Over. This she is got paid legacy. way more than PFL than UFC paid her, bro. No, PFL I agree. Paid. I agree. This is a legacy for Kayla Harrison. She, well, quit she's saying that she got legacy. a bag, like you know. But like I'm saying, I, she already has the bag. Like she's good. The money. I said it wrong. I said right. it wrong, Mills. Uh, she she doesn't need the fucking money, man. She's going for right. legacy. She's about to submit this bitch. I'm with you. I just say there is a path to victory. That Holly Holm can can't stay out here. And surprise some people and make this shit look a lot more interesting. And Kayla Harrison, she doesn't have a lot of those in cage 15 minute fight experiences to where it's like, oh wow, girls not letting me do what I gotta do. I gotta adjust as the fight goes. That's all I'm saying. PC, how's this fight hitting for you? This is the fucking locker room talk I'm talking about, man. This 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 is the fucking hot shit. You, you ain't gonna get this on any other podcast, dude. You ain't gonna get this kind of fucking energy or nothing like that, man. Download this shit anywhere. Um, dude. I, I'm going to be the potty pooper. This is the bathroom <laughs> break fight. Kayla wins a greasy split, and everyone fucking hates it. If so you're saying, uh, look, US Holmes is going to, you're going to, you're going to look at a live Holmes line and be like, mm. <laughs> dude, that some of these lines that it's so greasy, the live line will be so fucking high on a certain fighter, and then the other fighter will win. And the and it's like, no, no, don't cash out your parlays. No, they're they're good. They're good to go. Other fighter wins. Yeah, over under how many times somebody asks us on the live stream, should we cash out? Bro, I'm Morgan telling you, dude, it's so with, crazy. with Bo Nickel. No, no, so, Morgan know, Chayir, Taylor Harrison. 1200 live line with two minutes left in the third round loses a split decision. That shit's nutty. Yeah, seen yeah. it before, right? Yeah, and seen it before. Not and it's not even surprised anymore, man. Not even surprised. Algermain Sterling, Kelvin Cater, Mills. What you think? Man, so Aljo's been one of the most profitable guys that you guys can make money on if you guys have been betting on him for the last four years, uh, you know, but he's stepping up in a new weight class right now. Uh, one of those bigger uh, bantamweights in the division. So we'll see how he plays out now in this new featherweight division. Calvin yeah, Cater boxing is top tier. He has different, d d different ways to win if he can keep it on the feet. I gotta go out, Jermaine Sterling, in this one, man. Hearing him talk in media, he said, "Hey, man, you're getting the back, the Funk Master Flex." Y'all don't remember, but I do. Him against Hannon Barrero, I was actually at that fight. You know, out here at uh, UFC Anaheim, like he used to do a lot of like crazy kicks, knees, you know, jab, 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 mix it up, takedowns, you know. And he said in media day, he hasn't been able to perform like that, you know, because it's a little bit harder to make weight and everything like that. He said, "Hey, you guys are gonna get back that old Funk Master." So. I think we're not going to see just that standing out there trying to wrestle and take down. I think he's going to be striking. And, you know, a couple of fights, Al Jermaine did put up some good volume and some striking in there. Um, <clears throat> I think this is a fight where I just got to go with Al Jermaine Sterling because I've seen him already in his pedigree. I am a little bit worried because, you know, you're fighting a guy that's way bigger than you at this weight class. And if it does stay on the feet, Calvin Cater, you know, he, he definitely has uh, better striking skills than uh, – Al Jermaine Sterling, but I'm going to go ahead and say it goes the distance. Yeah, I think this is going to be like the most overlooked, underappreciated fight, but what a fucking great fight. Billy, what are your thoughts? I think this is a bookie trap here, man. Uh, Aljo originally, like when these lines came out for USC 300, he was at plus money. Now he's as high as a minus 180 favorite here in this spot. And for the sports books, they need Calvin Cater to win. And I'm kind of with the side of the sports books here, man. I mean, if – Fucking Aljamain Sterling was struggling to, to take down Bantamweights, but it makes me think that he's going to just magically take down Featherweights. Like, uh, Calvin Cater comes from a boxing background, dude. He's not he's not no slouch. Granted, uh, they don't pay him in the UFC to fucking grapple. They pay him to strike. But uh, his takedown defense is top-notch, bro. 91% takedown defense. I think he's going to have the better boxing on the feet. If you're getting clipped by Sean O'Malley right hand uppercuts, I can't imagine what Calvin Cater is going to do to you. Calvin Cater has some of the best – fucking right hand combo uppercuts you'll ever see and uh i actually think 
uh, Calvin Cater could win this by split decision or via decision. I like Calvin Cater in this spot here, man, a lot. Not a lot, a lot, but a lot more than Aljamain Sterling. I mean, bro, this tell me this doesn't scream like a bookie trap. The line opens up at plus 110, going up to minus 180. Everyone's bet Aljo from damn near even odds all the way up to minus 180. If Calvin Cater wins, you know how much money the bookies make on one of these prelim fights? I think Calvin Cater's the side. GC sitting in the back of the car. What do you think? I, I'm with you, Show. I think this is uh this fight is getting overlooked and it is underappreciated. I I'm not super duper convicted, but I'ma just say it's a levels fight and it ends inside the distance and Aljo subs him. I say there's some scary moments on the feet, but I think he uh I think he does do a little bit of ankle diving and desperate takedowns and he does backpack him like fucking I said it last night, like fucking late 2000s Kanye. I think it's just gonna be backpack time. Um, and yeah, I think I'll joke. Uh, <laughs> but like, I don't, I don't, I don't hate the cater side from like a. Fu- <laughs> I don't hate, I don't, I don't hate the fucking cater side from from a betting standpoint. Like, if it's on the feet, Aljo's in trouble for sure. But I think he's, I think he knows what to do. But hey, I mean, I'm not a big Sterling fan. If he gets knocked out, it ain't gonna hurt my, my feelings. But yeah, I think, uh, I think Aljo subs him. Yesterday on Media Day, he was talking about he had 14 pounds to cut. He was at 160. We've been seeing him in the corner of uh, some of the uh, Sarah Longo MMA guys. And uh, rumor is out on the street. You know, we might we might not be able to confirm it to Wayans. But we might have that little bit of scat, staph infection. Check that check that left elbow. and uh, Staph infection, perhaps? Yes, yeah, staph, staph infection, left elbow. Uh, staph inspection, inspection, meaning... Look out for this at the weigh-ins. His left elbow, scabby, and the left side of his face by his goatee at the bottom, a little bit scabby. Um, uh, Rumor is out there in the streets, man. Great. Now, have the staph infection. Who the fuck talks about at their media day? Yeah, you know, I'm at 160. Uh, you know, I'm moving up the featherweight, and I got to cut 14 pounds. Yeah, you and everybody fucking else on the card, bro. Yeah, so on media day, he was actually saying, man, I feel great right now. You know, it's the easiest that it's been right now, just to co- co- correct some kids sometimes when they speak. So he was actually saying, you know, it was like, usually when I'm talking to my family members, I'm not able to talk to them on Monday or Wednesday because, you know, I'm trying to save my voice and my energy. He was like, I was talking to everybody. You know, everybody's like, oh, this is a different Aljo. He's like, yeah, it is a different Aljo. So he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, I got about 11 uh, pounds to cut. I think it was 156 to be exact. I like to correct people and come with facts. But, you know, he was actually saying like, you know, <laughs> He was actually saying he was comfortable that he's ever been. He was never been able to have this energy on a Wednesday and talk to family members and have long conversations. So he said, "Yeah, everybody said, yeah, it's a different Aljo, you know." So yeah, actually, um, he was saying this is the best that he felt. What kind of cardio? Hashtag hashtag Aljo Staffgate. Hashtag infection inspection. Hello. Hashtag Doctor Bills. The biggest red flag is the line opened up damn near plus 110 even odds, and it's gone up to minus 180. We're sports bettors. We know how lines work. When everybody's on one side, you fucking fade it because the bookies would lose money with Aljo winning any particular victory of method, man. Mad people. on That is the most bet prelim favorite. It's got to be Aljamain Sterling, bro. When Dude, the- I was passing anyway, but like that just fucking sealed it in stone. Like, no fucking way. Bro, the line open up at minus 110. It's going up to minus 180, bro. I, that, I, that red flag uh, fade the public. Not not too often do I get two of my favorite fighters on the card. Yuri, quick story, all in Vegas, me, Mills. I don't know if Philly was there. But you weren't there uh, in Vegas, right? Uh, that was my uh, senior year of college. Yeah, 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 you, were on, you were on the That was you were on the, the night line. of my birthday. Spinning back, elbow, knocked him out, cashed it out, bought the whole bar out. The funny part of that story, Billy, is if you were in Vegas, you would have seen all of my 6'3", 340-pound ass running down the hall, all the way down the hallway, down seven floors to go make a bet before Yuri knocks this dude out. Yeah, that was one of the get best there, get the bet life. in, and then the knockout. One like, of the best nights of my life, bro. Literally, man, we – Cash that ticket and literally. That's hard not to become a fan, a super fan at that point. But uh, I don't think this one goes the distance myself. I think I think this is a second round. Um, Yuri, I, I think Yuri gets it done, but I would not be. I, I, I was a low-key Rackage fan back in the day. I don't know why um, I ended up getting off him and stopped just betting him personally. But uh, anybody here with a Rackage take that wants to take this one on first? 
Yeah, so on this one, you know, you got Yuri Prokaska looked good in his last fight out against Alex Pereira. You know, I actually had him in that fight uh, before he got caught with that little left hook or whatever it was. I dropped him in there. Um, Alexander Rakic, you know the story with him. Took some time off, got a leg injury in his last fight against Jan Blokowicz. But before that, man, he was as advertised. And, uh, you know, it's only a few times that you guys can go to war. And when you guys are going to war, you need to make sure you guys got somebody that's smart. Somebody who got heart. Somebody who got the IQ. Somebody who's ready to strike when he's been striking to. That's Alexander Rakic, man. Give me Alexander Rakic. I'm planting my flag and going to war. Minus 125. Man, this is one of my favorite light heavyweights. Ever since he came out, I've been watching the guy. John Jones used to be the champ. This was the only guy besides Dominique Reyes that I thought would be able to challenge and give John Jones that fight and maybe take the belt. He didn't get that opportunity. John Jones left, and the story went on. Man, I've been backing this guy for a while now. Give me Alexander Rakic to win. How? He's just going to do what he has to do. Fight resume, I give him a B plus. Striking, I give him a B. Cardio, I give him a B. Finish ability, uh, around a C plus. But when it comes down to an overall fighter, A, Alexander Rakic, we going to war. That's how we getting our money. That's how we getting paid. Next. Good shit, Nils. Yes, sir. Do you want me to rebuttal or does TC want to go? Either one of you, either one of you guys like either side, and does this go three? But so uh, originally I was on Rackage, but now nah, I'm on Jerry, dude. I, he got knocked, he got dropped by Devin Clark. Jerry gonna knock him the fuck out. So you're just flipping now. So you're just flipping out doing the podcast. I was doing that. I'm just fucking with you. No, just I, I, with you. I, I'm, I'm bullshitting. I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> I, uh, I I like Rackage here. Like <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm bullshitting. I, I'm just fucking around. I I like Rackage here, uh, I, man. Jerry's it's crazy that Jerry's only had four fights in the UFC. Um, but both of these guys are a little bit injury prone, but I think Jerry is more so and he's more inactive on the feet. Yeah, like Jerry is probably a little bit better of a striker, but like Rakic's leg kicks are kind of nasty, and I think he's the better fighter overall. But again, I'm gonna be the potty poopa. I think this is gonna be another one where it's like this fight does kick ass on paper. I think Jerry could knock him out. Um, in, in all seriousness, I know I was joking about the Devin Clark thing, but like Jerry, Jerry does hit really fucking hard. And if if Rackage tries to like get, just just be too cock strong on the feet, I, I think Jerry could fucking knock his block off. But yeah, give me Rackage like kind of lame decision. Like he kind of uh, is the better fighter overall and just kind of mixes it up a little more and wins. Uh, where it's like at the end of it, it wasn't the most exciting, but it's like yeah, he probably did enough to win. Womp womp, but they there's get. only one other guy on this podcast stream that was a bigger fan of Yuri Prakaska because I remember he was telling me, asking me about him when he was fighting in Rising. Great. What's your take on this guy, Billy? Biggest bet of the card right here, man. Yuri Prakaska on the money line. You're telling me he's a fucking underdog versus a guy with a fucking ACL ACL tear layoff. This is a horrible spot for Alexander Ratchik. Uh, Yuri has 29 wins. 28 of them bitches are finishes, man. Uh, he Watch that Ryzen film. He has good wrestling. Everyone's talking about, you know, Ratchik who had the offensive wrestling. Man, Ratchik coming off the layoff. Yuri was the fucking champion, gave up the belt because of injury, bro. Prior to that, bro, if he if that injury doesn't happen, granted, you know, it's life and lines are what they are, he would be a minus 200 favorite in this fight. They ain't put Yuri Prakashka as the prelim main event for him to be a fucking chair guy, a fall guy here. Alexander Ratch is about to get knocked the fuck out in brutal fashion in this one. It's going to be the future prelim main event this is the last one that everybody gets to see before they buy the pay-per-view that's a year your prakashka ain't fighting on no prelims the fucking lose man 29 wins 28 finishes there's this is about to be 30th win 29 finishes man the biggest bet of the card here bro yuri prakashka money line god bless america what a take what a cast yeah, that's why I said I already knew. I already knew. That's why I said, you know, he 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 been on him since he was from Rising and stuff, you know. So I, I actually I played him in that in that uh, Alex Pereira fight. Got it. Got it. Alex was going to win and uh you know what the lawyer says I usually take. The only one he's been wrong on is one. Hey, hey, before we move on real quick, show what do you think about that one, Bubba? Yeah, I was just that about to say one, because yeah, what, what, can, he can didn't I take real he, quick? Yeah, he really just like skipped over it and acted like, bro, like, he you're part of the podcast, motherfucker. Well, you got a microphone. No, 
Hold on, hold on. I told, I told like you, him. he's one of my favorite fighters. I had the story. I gave enough fucking background on you. You know, who the, fuck I, you know who the fuck I am betting on this fight, bro? Come on. You really need to be get louder to just say I'm betting on fucking Yuri? Yes. yes. No, you don't. Let's fucking go. I love it. You got it. Bo Nichols, $2,500 ass versus fucking Cody Brundage. I just slammed a dude in one. Billy, who do you think wins? I mean, this is. Or, do you think this goes the distance? You, Either you, one's a dumbass you, question because no, I don't think it's you, going the distance. It's out the first round is the question for the panel. Yes or no? There you go. Does it get out of the first round? Does round two start? <laughs> Maybe, dude. It might actually. I don't know. Probably not though. Probably, yeah, Bobo, probably Bobo KO. But I tell you what, if he goes to the cards, I think that's a bad look for Bo Nickel Man Brundage does not historically have super duper great cardio so if he is if he is the second coming of uh of the lord almighty like yeah he, he better get that dude up out of there but i think he does i was telling tc before the fucking podcast like cody brundage style is a body type you would never create in ufc like ufc 24 like you're never making cody brundage as a creative fighter <laughs> Uh, and let me get a lug with one round of cardio constantly pulls gilly like is in good <laughs> spots to win and just like loses it let me fucking make let me let me get the fucking stats on that bad technical uh, striking but does have power <laughs> don't uh, sleep Cody yeah he does power. we'll Cody jack up. the power up tune down the fight iq <laughs> yeah, i mean man, like, Cody 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 has a path to victory man like it's real uh, man huh? like, when you haven't been punched, on a fucking it's, it's it's all about bro. Like, can you take a punch? Is the question. We just haven't seen it yet, you know. So that's just the thing. We haven't seen it yet. But I like Bo Nickel to win first round. Um, you know, I think he gets it done. I'm gonna just go ahead and take him to win inside the distance in that first round because, like you said, he could win by either paths. But I wouldn't be smart or just fight ends in first round is the best bet. Fuck it. So we're all in agreement. This is probably not starting round two. Anybody Agreed. want to debate that it goes longer? I mean, maybe like it depends. It, it depends on how Cody fights. Like he's a step up from like Val Woodburn and Pickett. I don't Val I, Woodburn. I, like, <laughs> I mean, come on. Now. What what we're talking about here, boys? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's greasy, man. But I, I tell you what, if you are someone that you're just like a, a, a hopeless degenerate and you just got to have action on every fight, just a little something, something. This is where you throw a dart and just have a little fun with Brundage. He probably loses. Oh. I tell you what, if it hits, like it's it's more likely to hit than a fucking lottery ticket. And if it does, you, you, you're going to be fucking doing a backflip. You yeah, like, like, we, like we said, he's only got to win 198 times out of 100. Money towards the bookies. The bookies' job is to get money on both sides. The line is the way that it is because, you know, people watching the card, oh, you know, I, got, I'm not, I don't want anything to do with That's why I preface it with it, like, if you have to have action because, yeah, right, a smart right. man passes. A smart man definitely the, passes on it. I think the, it, I think it is prohibitive story. like a motherfucker. The degeneracy prop on this one, we talked about earlier. Round one that. knockout, man. Round uh -huh. one knockout. That's the D-Gem play. You do mm -hmm. not you do not bet Cody Brundage here. If you're betting Cody Brundage, bet fight the end by submission at minus 115. That's Brundage round did. one is plus 3,400, dude. That's kind of, kind of fucking that, though, Billy. Yeah, like, for real. Big tell him. Because big, if it's submission prop, like, yeah, no, let me explain. Right let me explain. If you're betting no, no, fuck the submission prop. We don't even want an explanation for that betting shit. Betting the submission prop. I, I heard Brundage all, all morning. You do not bet plus three, uh, a, a dog that's plus 1,200. You bet fight the end of submission minus 115. What What the fuck are we doing? The surest way for Brundage to look. Exactly. The surest submission prop, dumbass. I think who's a chunk of money is to put $10 on Brundage. price tag. Yeah, you don't get, if you're, if you're on the Brundage side, yeah, you probably don't get cute anyway you're it's baked into the line like the the right. dart the dart you're throwing if it hits it's going to be a fucking bullseye probably going to win you the game well, cricket, if you know you're betting saying? the Bo nickel sub prop and it's the same exact price you can get both fighters why the fuck would you take the one with only one fighter you take the one with both the, fighters. the surest way for cody brundage to lose this fight in my opinion is to pull gilly yeah, minus 115 i'm just saying <laughs> so nah, the submission cool prop is at minus 115 and fight the end well, by we got a podcast to do 15 you oh, yeah, we do had do to fight the end we by the at minus 115. Bro, Mills, I I know you live in California and you don't have access to like California, big, like domestic, lo, like the big domestic props, California. but like the prop market, bro, that's the way you got to play it. Bro. What, what would you bet him at sub at minus 115? You get both fighters. Granted, I don't think Cody Brundage wins by sub, but hey, if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> the state of California, that's what I said, neighbor. Well, boys, I don't do this often. But when I do, I'm going to war. 
I'm playing my flag on placing my bets on Du Bronx. Not only is he one of my favorite active fighters in the UFC, I think he's got a big advantage. Uh, this is a big step up for Armin, if you ask me. Just looking at previous fights from Du Bronx, this is a giant step up for him. There's a clear difference on the feet here. I think Charles is not too shabby on the ground, obviously. We've seen that in the past, too. So I'm going to take the fighter that has three ways to win the fight. Um, I think he can can control the over grappling of Armin, and I think the books just done forgot about him. I don't get this line at all. I'm taking the plus one eighty, plus one ninety now, and I'm gonna catch a Duke Bronx and remind him, plant my flag, Duke Bronx. Woo! How you seeing this one going? I want to take Duke Bronx, but the the is a bad stylistic matchup for him. Uh, from the aspect of the way that Armin fights uh granted du bronx is great on the ground but that's a lot of shit off of his back armin is the one that will probably win the minutes but hey for big shows uh bet though man the way armin got clipped by um fucking uh jacqueline silva when he was a big favorite in that fight and he was fighting a little bit out of characteristic if he does if he fights like that in this fight and tries to strike within the first five minutes i definitely think du bronx can clip him but Remember the name because uh, it might be going away soon. Hey, very well could be. If he doesn't, if he doesn't get this one, you know, uh, I'm gonna have to start taking another. I'm gonna have to take, take, a, take a hard look at Oliveira after this one. This one, I feel like this is just a big step up for Armin. I mean, and I like him, so I, he's on, he's on the right trajectory. This is just not the guy you want to face at this time. Where he's, if Charles oliveira has got to run, he's gonna make it. You know, he's gonna start his run right now. I'm this guy. This could be the bullshit way of the UFC getting like the win that Armin needs to, you know, when they do the clip for like when he yeah, fights. Yeah, absolutely. Game. Charles Oliveira is a great name to have on your resume. Yeah, this could be the one that can get him the title shot. Because if you look at Islam Makachev's career, bro, the the real ones, no, you know, the the hardest fight's probably Justin Gaethje, but uh, Justin Gaethje, but um, Armin <laughs> Armin Shazrukian <laughs> was. The real Fuck. ones know what? Fucking him up. What? Armin was fucking him up for a little bit in the beginning portions of that fight. So, uh, hey, man, the only time we haven't seen Islam look invincible is against Armin. So they definitely want to run that back as a uh, main event like a year from now. Mills? Yeah, man. Uh, so both these fighters made my top three light uh, uh, lightweights in the UFC. Uh, coming in at number three was Amaran Sarukian. Uh, one of the things that, you know, I was a little bit critical on was his, uh, you know, fight resume. Fight resume didn't get that high. Got about a C plus. Wrestling gave him an A. Cardio gave him an A. Uh, finishability, you know, roughly around like a C plus as well. But this is the guy that I actually think is going to be fighting for that belt next. Coming in at number two was definitely Charles the Bronx. The reason why is crazy. His fight resume, A+. Plus. Finishability, A+. Plus. Uh, you know, uh, shit, his cardio didn't get the highest of grade. Got him at a C+. Plus. But the way that he's finishing his opponents is any way possible. He could do it by submitting you. He could do it on the feet. And people got thought those narratives, man. He quits. He does this. He does that. Like, when I just hear about that, it just lets me know that people really don't know Charles Oliveira. And they're just hearing stuff and seeing something in it and just going with that narrative. But I think this is a spot for Armand Sarukian to get it in. Uh, I did do a parlay with him. I do think Charles Oliveira is one of the best underdogs on this card. Um, if there's two fighters on there that I think are just too that great. Part too great of underdogs to where it's like if you're not betting on him if you're fans you guys are crazy but i'm going with a monster in this one dc how do you think he gets it done though mills but before you go to tc do you think armin gets it like a late finish or do you think that it's by decision i think he finishes him i say i say i say like round two i can't imagine nah. odds on a late finish here nah, that's what happened in tc uh man great uh great stuff there boys i, I think that's uh that's great information all around i don't have too too much to add for, to it but i will say this in in my mind i see this fight as a pick em. so <laughs> if you're giving me plus money on charles or dubrans or Vier, like i think the champion might still have a name dude like i don't think charles is washed i think if you can take fucking bombs from Justin and Chandler and old Dusty, I'm not so sure that Armin is just going to spark him out. Like, I, I don't think it's like insane that Armin's a favorite or anything. Like, I do see pass for him to win. I can see Armin winning a decision. Uh, like Billy was saying, I, I think that uh, it's, dude, that's 
it's a damn good scalp to have on your fucking is uh, on your yeah, wall. Like a, a good never... fucking trophy on your wall, dude. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you what, man. If anybody knows anything about me, it's like yeah, I say a lot of dumb shit, and like I'm a I'm an arrogant like prick, but. I will eat my shit too. I'll eat my crow. And I was one of those fucking dumbasses that used to say that shit about Charles and try and get cute with it. Oh, dude. Like, oh, he got, he got fucking finished by fucking Felder and all this shit. But like, I think if anyone can't see that he's turned, he also became champion after that too. It, it, yeah, exactly. It's just willful ignorance at that point. If you can't see that Charles has improved and he's like, he, he's definitely upped his heart and his like desire to win. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I think, uh, it's a good fight. It's a close fight. I, I really like it. But, uh, yeah, just from a betting standpoint, I bet Charles at plus 180. Um, I think he knocks out Armin, but yeah, I, seeing Armin win or like him ground and pounding Du Bronx out wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, I'm gonna ride with Big Show on this one. I'm gonna tie my flag to uh, to the Charles Oliveira banner here, and uh, yeah, dude, let's go to war, Du Bronx. One thing that scares me about Oliveira in this spot is, granted, all those fights that you talked about was before like he really got. Uh, there's like there's you make money, but then there's money where your family is eating type thing. I, I, Mills would be able to explain it a little bit better, but like he's got the wife, the you kids, Mills, bro? family. No, no, I'm saying like when you, when you're, when you get there's money. I, I get what you're saying money. about the desire to like get like gen, secure generational wealth for your family, especially if you're a dude that came up from the fucking favela, like he came up from the dirt literally. But like I still think he's hungry, and I think he's uh. Yeah, man, like, I I'm just not so sure that, like, Armin Sar like, like Armin Sarukin's best win is another dude that Dubronx finished in the first round, like, after, like, six months that. after Charles fucking head kicked him. So, like, it's a yeah, step up for Armin, but it's a winnable fight, too. So, like, I, I don't begrudge anybody for, like, saying Ar Armin is parlayable. It's not a stupid line. He's 26. He's in his prime. Like, he's the better wrestler, I, I think. But, like, yeah, dude, if you're going to give me plus money on a former champion that I think is mm -hmm. the better striker and, like, is a dangerous, like, let's say he's not like going to be the better grappler or better on top. Like I think he can at least maybe threaten with some submissions, use it to sweep or get back up to his feet or some, but it's a great fight, man. And I like how like you hear from now, how, how you guys have fighting Islam and Charles of is probably going to fight Conor McGregor off of the loss. Oh, Conor McGregor, but I I'm mean, saying Oliver versus McGregor. If he does lose, that's a great fight. I'm just not sure Conor's going to fucking ever fight again, dude. That's yeah, I, yeah, we're not even going to waste oxygen on that one. <laughs> But our mind, when it comes down to it, for me, he's one of these guys, man. Um, he's in the Islam Makachev, the Marab Divashali category. It's about three or four of those to where I just bet all the fucking time. Don't matter the price tag on him. Favorite parlay and parlay him. It was Arman and it was Islam and it was Marab. Hazmat, you know what I mean? Like those but four that, fighters. That fight doesn't scare you at all, though. He was like minus seven hundred. We're shitting our fucking bricks. I, didn't, I didn't have anything on that one. Anything, got. I think. Like, like if the, you think Armin wins, like this is a, a very parlay. You know, I, I I like Dubronx here, but it's not crazy. It's not even minus two fifty. So if you're on the Armin side, like that's a that's a parlayable line for sure. Yeah, there'd be no uh, Dubronx bashing on this podcast at all. Like yeah. at all. He's, I've he's, tried to, and it, it just made me look like stupid as fuck. I, like, for a while, I always, I'm always on the other side of him, but I'm never like saying he's whack, he's this or that. But like, I had Michael Chandler, I'm always on the other side. The motherfucker forced yeah, me dude, to respect I, him, just yeah, like I'm always on the other side, but I always be like, Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah won, bro. we were so fucking close, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I'm like, you know, but I, I respect it, man. I respect it. Some more for it. fucking goats, guys. Some more goats to talk about here. Justin Gaethje, <laughs> Max Holloway, Billy, you've been off the mic with a go ahead. Ah, uh, this is. This is one of those ones, man. Uh, don't put your money on this fight. This is what you would call, like, in different promotions, a showcase fight. This fight doesn't have anything to do with the division. Justin Gaethje wins this fight. What really happens? Max Holloway wins this fight. What really happens? Uh, Justin Gaethje's kind of just staying active till he can get the uh, winner of the Dustin Poirier Islam Makachev fight, which might not even happen till then in the summer. So uh, I think Justin Gaethje wins probably in the later rounds in this fight. Um, I'm no disrespect to Max Holloway here in this spot, but um, I actually like the overs in this fight over three and a half and uh, Justin Gaethje in the late rounds. Mills. Yeah, um, man, two BMFs right here. Uh, both deserve uh, titles and belts for that. So it's only right that they got Max Holloway fighting for it in this one. Uh, so, yeah, big Max Holloway fan. 
when he was on his reign, I mean, shit, even before he had his reign, I remember him fighting with Pettis, and I'm like, man, this is going to be one of the best fights ever. Like, back in those days when you had young fighters like that fighting against each other, it was entertaining. Then you had Anthony Pettis versus Tony Ferguson, you know? Like, Max Holloway done fought everybody. Fight resume, A fucking plus. Striking, A fucking plus. Cardio, A fuck, A plus. Um, you know, a chin, A plus. Durable. Like, come on, man. A like, plus is for me for a reason, though, bro. Yeah, but how, how can you not like Max Holloway, you know? He's coming up, you know, he's fighting at this weight class, right? Last time he did, he fought Dustin Poirier on short notice. Difference is this. Y'all remember them pictures and videos going around of Max Holloway like three months ago when they're talking about, oh, Usada's gone. Look at Max looking a little bit more muscular. Let this sink in. He's been saying that, yeah, now I'm filling into this little weight class and body to where it's going to be a different in here. I'm going to have a lot more power and strength. I'm already going to have the speed and everything. When you're taking a fight on short notice, your power, your muscles, your strength ain't, ain't, ain't relating in about three weeks. But he done had about three, four, five months to prepare for this. Anybody betting on Max Holloway in this spot, bless him. I ain't got no problems with you. But my pick, my first pick, my gut prediction was Justin Gaethje can take damage and those leg kicks is going to be too much for him. So I actually think Justin Gaethje can withstand the damage from Max Holloway compared to, I don't know if Max Holloway can withstand all the damage from Justin Gaethje as the fight goes through. Justin Gaethje's been better going with game plans. He's not going out there reckless abandonment. He's actually going for takedowns and everything and, uh, you know, imp impressing me in fights. The fight that brought my eyes to the attention was the fight against F Fiziov. He looked top tier in Back. there. He Back. looked he looked good. He looked at like it was a different level of – okay. mm -hmm. Right. Back, so, right. so he added in those little bit of nuances to his game to where it wasn't just the Justin Gaethje hands down, you know, uh, type of fighting style. So I actually think Justin Gaethje turned a little bit of page and is kind of picking up like Kamara Usman to where he's just adding in more more skills to his game instead of just being known as a one uh, one level uh, uh, one dimensional uh, striker. DC, hot take. I fucking hate this fight. Now, now, don't don't get me wrong. I don't hate it because it, I think it's going to suck or because I think it's not going to be fucking sick as a fight. Like, it's going to be a badass fight. It's going to be a bloody fucking ugly ass war in a, in a good way. But I hate it because these are two of my absolute favorite fighters. Max Holloway is my favorite featherweight, has been for years. Justin Gaethje has been my favorite fighter for like five years. And like, yeah, it's this is not going to be a flag planning fighter, though, because I, I, I like both of these fighters and like. This is just going to be a heartbreaker for me, dude. No matter who, it's lose-lose for me. Just as a fan, like, uh, it, it, Billy said it, like, this is for nothing. But a fuck-ass, fugazi-ass BMF belt. Both of these, like, th they're going to both take damage off what's left of their durability. And, like, yeah, like, Max is probably the more durable fighter. But, dude, he's just not taking punishment on a normal basis from a dude like Justin Gaethje. And, like, the way Max wins fights and, like, breaks dudes is like having these wars of attrition and to do that with justin you're just gonna have to take too much fucking punishment and like i i, I i'd be lying to you if i said that what i didn't think was gonna happen was justin was gonna be the first dude to knock out max holloway and, it's, and i think that's gonna happen it's gonna break my fucking heart but even if it's the other way say max like knocks justin out or like whoops his fucking ass like yeah everyone's gonna fucking cheer like it's gonna be great for like the fans and shit like i get like Max is kind of, it's kind of like a little like David and Goliath, like Max is taller, but it's like the dude moving up. Like it's going to be the fucking, like, you know, daring to be great. Like it's going to be a great win for him, but like, it's my favorite fighter losing. So it kind of sucks for me, but yeah, as far as just, just to make it short and sweet, Justin, Justin by knockout. But, uh, I, I hope it's just a Justin decision. I hope really that this fight gets fucking scrapped. Come on. What round do you see the knockout prop and do you think it's like early or late? I, I, I've been saying Justin round three, but yeah, like round four, like, I don't. I just don't know. If it it just depends, man. I, I, Justin gets after it quick. Max is not going to be able to start slow, like. And that's the thing, like Max. He has probably a little bit better cardio, but Justin is not some gas bag, dude. Like he trains at altitude and he carries his power late and works at a pretty steady clip himself. So yeah, I, I just I'm just gonna be closing my eyes. I'm gonna be watching through my fucking fingers. <laughs> would would it be too late for me to do what I did earlier on the first fight? I, I know too long, bro. Go ahead. No, this one makes more sense no, to no, me. I got, oh, this one, man. I, I gotta go you. with it. I'm sorry, folks. Yes, like I said, my pick, the guy that I picked to win this fight is Justin Gaethje, man. But oh, 
fucking shit, bro. Max Holloway, man. I've been I've been riding with this guy forever. Forever. I've never really been on the Justin Gaethje side. I'm sticking to I'm sticking to the gut, man. So I'm sticking to my guns, man. Max Holloway said it's gonna be a new me. I'm gonna show these people the Max Holloway that they forgot. They asked him in media day, why'd you cut your hair? Why'd you cut your hair? He was like, because these people forgot who the fuck Max is. So I gotta show him. And when he kind of said that a little bit, I was like, you're right, because I actually fucking forgot. You know what I mean? Like, I actually forgot. You've been winning and shit, but haven't been impressed too much on it. So fuck, man. I'm I wouldn't be mad if Max Holloway wins. I'll be kind of like happy in the inside, you know what I mean? But Justin Gates, he's the pick, man. But fuck, man, like I, Max Holloway, man, like that from dude, dude he, he, how can you hate Max? Like he's one of the he's kind of like Jim Miller. He's just like one of the most lovable fucking dudes there is, and like he's a badass. Like from a betting standpoint, I don't begrudge anybody for betting Max, even at this line. Like yeah, two plus two hundred plus two twenty five when it first opened was better, but like. Yeah, plus 270 or plus 170 on like a former champion, like moving up. I don't know, man. <laughs> just, I just yeah. don't like it. Yeah. Whaley versus Jan Mills. First take, and does this go to all five rounds? Piggyback off it, man. And riding the young Shinan train early on, you know, before people start talking about her, or even knew who she was, you know, wasn't doing anything that made it worthy or anything. But she was covering that price tag, you know, for me. She was a big favorite uh, in a lot of her earlier fights. The only fight that I really took a dive on and lost and what kind of made me look the other way and I never got back on it was the fight against Carla Esparza. Because then now when I think she was like a minus 170, you know, I had a bet your lunch money segment on it. And I'm pretty sure that was like the most convinced on a fight that I've been on for a long time. Uh, her win against Claudia Gedalia was kind of turned would turn me on to show like, hey, she can do it. Claudia Gedalia was one of my favorite women fighters uh, before it was JJ uh, in the division, you know. But then after that, I was like, all right, she got crucifix in round two against Carla Esparza. Then she lost to another girl that I used to bet that I thought was a dark horse of Marina Rodriguez. So it could have been those two back-to-back -back losses that made me just never look at her again. Her next fight, she fought my girl, Mackenzie Dern, who everybody know I've been betting her for the longest, you know. And then she fought Jessica Andrade in a fight that I just looked the other way and didn't care about. The narrative is this, man. UFC 300, I think, is magical uh, just because the fighter that's all fighting on it. So I'm going with kind of like back to my fighters that I was betting on and backing a little bit before they got here. If you were supporting them before they got to the biggest stage of the career, you ain't supporting them now. Say, Zaylee Wang, I've been betting on her. I've been backing her a little bit, but I didn't lost some money with her. She lost two times to Rose, and those two times were the two times that I really would convince, like, she's going to win. Narrative and key point. I've seen her lose before. She could do it again. Give me Young Janan to go ahead and pull the upset. Nice, Bill. What do you think? These are one of those fights where, like, I'm not getting up to bet Whaley Zhang on the money line in a parlay, but I do like her method of victory props. I actually think if Whaley Zhang wins this fight, it's probably a finish, man. Uh, how many people are going to be casuals? See Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, and fucking Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill after this fight and think that this fight is going to go to the judges' scorecards. I actually think this fight doesn't go the distance, and I think that Whaley Zhang gets a finish in rounds two three or four but two three or four by knockout is um two three four by knockouts plus 360 and then two three four by submissions 12 to one odds i think if you're going to play Whaley Zhang, i think you have to venture into the prop markets um i actually like fight doesn't go to distance in this one at minus 142 as well uh i'm gonna sleep on it a little bit figure it out but um i'll, I'll definitely be betting the under on this like i, I don't think this hits the judge scorecards if Yanan Yan wins. I think it's more by a uh, her going for the fight, like if that makes sense. Like she's gonna have to try to get a finish. Uh, if it wasn't for Whaley Zhang's ground game, I think fight the end by knockout would have been a good odds, but they're kind of pricing it where uh, like fight the end by knockout in the decision prop is the same exact odds. So it's like, eh, you're just gonna have to pick the fighter that you think is gonna win. TC. Let me preface this by saying that I am fucking atrocious at picking both of these chicks. I am the worst Zhang Wiley and Yan Xiaonan predictor, like, 
I, I don't even really like consider myself like a tipster, but like as far as predictions go, I am terrible at picking both of these chicks. I I wouldn't bet this with a free bet. I I just don't care quite enough. Not saying it's a bad fight, but like, nah, dude, just pass. But like, yeah, I'm kind of with Billy. I think I think they're on a different level. Like, not not crazy, but like, I think I think Zhang is a slightly better than Yan Shao Nan, like kind of everywhere. Maybe not like pure boxing, but I think Yan's a better kickboxer. So yeah, I think she probably like finishes her, but a, a Zhang decision wouldn't surprise me. But again, I'm terrible. Whatever I say, the opposite will fucking happen here because I just I suck with both of these chicks. Go ahead and take the lead on this one too, TC. You think uh, I, I like this fight a lot. I like this fight a lot, but I got nothing here. Um it's hard to say that it doesn't go the distance. I just feel like that's the most obvious fucking like take on planet Earth. But it wouldn't stun me to see it go to decision, especially if they're both kind of like it's like a chess match kind of. I could see that really, but honestly, dude, with the power here, somebody probably can put to sleep. Um, Pereira doesn't have the best chin. Jamal Hill, like, yeah, he's got a lot of power, but I other, know, than other, like, he, he, other than I other than Chicago. Other, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm interested to hear what you guys say about this, honestly. But yeah, uh, I'm picking Pereira by knockout, but yeah, probably ends inside the distance. Like, uh, Poetana ain't got the best chin, but yeah, Jamal Hill hasn't really been cracked by anybody except for Santos. And like, yeah, I think Pereira's a little, little bit more dangerous than Tiago at this point. But yeah, I, I could see Pereira getting slept too, but I think someone takes a fucking nap here. I got, I got nothing on this fight, especially because it's a main event. Uh, I do like, I do see if, uh, the one thing I can see, I can't get out of my fucking head, is the Strickland fight against Izzy. Like, I, I feel like it could be similar in this way with that straight and the one-two out of Jamal Hill. Like, if he can kind of control the way Pereira's moving around the, you know, the ring, I can see Jamal Hill getting it done. I'm not betting it. I like Pereira, too, but I can only like Pereira so much. Like, he's only had so many fights. I, I'm just not betting this one, Mills. Yeah, I don't think this one goes the distance at all. Um, when we look at both these fighters, you know, uh, they both got past the victory. I'll start with Alex Pereira, the champ. Might as well. He got the belt. I mean, for him, he got some of the most strongest leg kicks. When he goes to kick that leg, it looks like you damn near doing the double dutch or fucking hopscotch and this shit. Like, man, like both those legs connect. And you looking at yourself like, how would I get down, kick down to the ground? It looks like those old uh, judo sweeps when somebody just sweeps the back of your leg real quick just to trip you and shit to catch you off balance. That's how powerful those leg kicks are. But when it comes down to it, man, I actually think, you know, he, he's not a big, scary guy like how he is. I just think it's just that if he touches you with that left hook, you know, he has power and he can put you to sleep. I don't think that power is really transferring over to this bigger weight class in the light heavyweight division. His fight against Sean Blockowitz was lackluster. A lot of people thought he lost. I was kind of one of them, um, you know. And then his fight against Yuri Prokoska. Didn't look that good in the first round. Yuri Prokoska was winning until he lost. Hmm. All right, cool. Almost could have been 0-2 in this weight class. Question Jamal for you Hill, real quick, Mills. Question. Mm -hmm. You said he, you thought he kind of lost that fight versus Jan. Um, What do you think he lost? What was the biggest? What was his biggest I, uh, deficit? I didn't fight? think that he did enough volume. I didn't think that he did enough volume in that fight. So you now we got I mean? a guy with fucking that likes to lead with the one, two and the straight. Like if you're not throwing in, you got a guy thrown in your face constantly, man. Like if you're low volume and you're getting shot at, like I'm just warning people. Like oh, I heard a lot of people on Pereira and a lot of people are, um, I don't know what the line's done since Tuesday. Stayed the same. Stayed the same. Hill, Hill, Hill is definitely going to be looking to counter off that leg kick. It's going to be a battle. I think it's going to be a battle of the leg kick and the fucking the straight and the hook. Like like Mills was saying, that hook is a death touch. But yeah, like it's this is a great fight, man. Yeah, we're talking about like you know like segments and stuff. I mean, started from the bottom and we here. I mean, how many times you gonna get that? You know, yeah. former fighter coming off the contender series like Jamal Hill built his resume up. Gave him Darko Stokes. All right, whatever. Gave he did him the right thing with the belt when he wanted to. He couldn't defend it, so he you know he did the same thing Yuri kind of did too. Yeah, exactly. He got that opportunity to give it to him. You know, um, I was on the wrong side of a fight with him. You know, I had Jimmy Crude in there. I thought Jimmy Crude was gonna be able to get it done. Wasn't able to. Uh, you know, put off some knowledgeable wins, you know, Johnny Walker, Tiago Santos, Glover Tejera to get the belt. The guy's fast. The guy got power in his hands. The guy can switch stances out there. His footwork is not good, though. It's not great. A little bit flat-footed. Shout out to uh, Dan Levy from uh, Best Fight Picks or whatever, man. He was one of the first people that was glamoring and gloating about Jamal Hill being anything. 
I'm talking about like damn near two and a half years ago after his it like used to be a running joke between me and you, Mills. Like the best thing out of Michigan was Jamal Hill. <laughs> remember, no, remember it was Scott Mays, I thought, but yeah, man. No, like, he was always the guy we made fun of or just you know kind of sucking. Jamal Hill, we I I always remember saying like Saginaw's finest and blah blah blah. Like not saying not calling him out like saying he's good, like yeah, the best out of Michigan, but what's Michigan really known for, you know? Yeah, it's like saying the best out of Alaska. Yeah, not, oh. not, not, not a big bow. But when you talk about it, man, we're talking about a fighter, man. He's a fucking fighter, bro. Fuck what's going on in the cage, man. He's out there, you know, Look putting at the lights on his graphic. Because his brother was striking his mom or something. Like, like, dude, like he's one of them dudes that you really want. Now, look, hear me out. Narrative time. All these people talking about this dude's weight and like, watch this. He's a little chubby on these pictures in these videos. He's doing this. Motherfucker, he's been like that since he's been fighting. He always has that little baby gut. It doesn't matter. You don't got to have the physical physique of a Johnny Walker to go out there and win fights. It's a fucking fight. They make them in all shapes and size. I don't let none of that shit go into my capping, y'all. None of that shit. Okay, so a lot of people is playing that narrative saying this and that. Look at his fights. He looks the same way. He's never ripped. You're never going to see a six pack. I like that. Why? Because that's him. You know what I mean? That's the way he fights. That's the way he performs. That's the way I fight. People pay, paying too much attention to a guy's physique and not looking at his skills. 12 and 1, 12 and fucking 1 in the one fight was an arm injury. An arm injury is what it and got reported as. It. And he was right. fighting fucking through it, trying to throw fucking hands. Right. Right. Want to watch Big Show? Because he's a fucking fighter. That's what fighters do. He said, look, y'all talking about this guy being a monster, being this, being that. Yeah, two-time champ, two-time champ. Look at what I do to him this Saturday. Give me Jamal Hill. I'm going to – I'm I'm betting on the dog. I already bet him. And like I said, man, he's getting the belt back and new champion, Sweet Dreams Jamal Hill. There you go. Any, did I leave anybody out on this one? Everybody talk on it. I don't want to leave. Oh, well, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no. TC, go. I'm, I I'm, was just gonna say all these motherfuckers ducking and Goliath, but that's all. I'm sorry, Billy, to cut you off. I apologize, brother. No, I got a good story time for this right, one. Right. Uh, I'll be quick with it though. I used to work for this dude back when I was in college, and then when I got out of college, and uh, long story short, his lawyer was actually Alex Pereira's lawyer. So we had some really good Alex Pereira insight. Like we've been making good money on it. But last year when I was talking to him right before Easter, we went on like this uh, lunch at this fucking Brazilian place. I don't even know where the fuck it was at, but it was over by Glover's gym. And he was giving me the rundown of the whole thing. Like he basically said he was going to lose to Izzy. We bet fucking 150 bucks on each Izzy round prop day before Easter. But as I digress a little bit, um, this one, levels to it not levels but like you're basically getting a striker against a professional kickboxer bro like i not not the best of spots for jamal hill in my opinion but they've been preparing for this matchup for years uh ever since glover took that loss against jamal hill he said he was going to revenge the loss um then jamal hill had that injury so that kind of prevented uh this fight happening but uh supposedly he was supposed to fight israel adesanya then he was supposed to fight at 205 after that, then he was going to get the belt. When he defends the belt, he's going to defend it against Jamal Hill, and then he has another Israel Adesanya fight. That was what I was told. And then a year later, you know, I don't work for the guy anymore because the dude's a fucking dick. But uh, a year later, uh, everything that he said is basically fucking happening. So I think uh, he's going to win this one. I think this goes over one and a half rounds. And uh, the way fucking Alex Pereira is talking, he wants to kind of win like a point decision and then running uh, for uh yeah. alive not something i'm really too convicted on not my favorite fight but um i think alex prayer wins uh over one and a half alex prayer probably in rounds two or three i'm sorry y'all but like i talk a lot but at least y'all know what the fuck i'm saying at the end of it uh, what, what was the point of everything at the end of that one billy we got good insight on Alex Pereira, but this isn't one that's like as convicted as like the other ones, I would say. But so, um, what is the lawyer? Put it up there with the lion. How convicted are you? Is this the lion in the zoo or the lawyer in the fucking Bronx or whatever? Do you want to see? Do you want to see the pictures of me in the office holding up the fucking belt and taking lion pictures? Lion in the zoo. No. It, I know your lawyer <laughs> stories with Daniel. You've been on this Alex Pereira lawyer shit since his second fight. So it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely it Glover, yeah. He's Glover at the point. Now got it, got it, got you it. got the inside on Glover and Pereira? Yeah, because they both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Bro, bro it's his fucking lawyer, bro. His lawyer he's, shit. You know much shit he's got in Alex Allen out of, bro? He was a fucking immigrant when he first but, started. To bro, you're state. putting people on blast now? I was going to say, dude, you just. I don't work for the guy anymore. Spot. I don't work for the guy anymore. He's a dick, so fuck fucking, him. fucking you right. Better, you might need to call your attorney. So. All right, let's build this parlay, though, boys. Who wants to throw the first? Who wants to throw the first person up? Man, I think there's this guy named Bo Nickel, bro. And like, <laughs> can I put can I put my first leg up? Uh, and I actually want to take this uh, a little bit differently than how we usually do things. Jalen Turner inside the distance is my first leg of my parlay. Can we just we just make Turner a leg of the parlay? Not, bro, if he's gonna win the fight, he's gonna win it. Itd. What? But just go ahead. Let's let, let's get it started. Go ahead, Bill. Jalen Turner inside the distance. I don't like the money line. I like the prop. All right. Well, we all like Turner. It would be nice to just be able to put the money line. Oh, what if he... that's, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Um, that's that's I'm, one leg for the base. Turner money line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not Bill, even a Bill, debate. Like you can still bet the inside the distance prop if you like. Yeah, it. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just like the graphic for you. Make him a, I'll tweak the graphic for you. Yeah, tweak it for me because I, I I I'm not parlaying a money line if the dudes all of this finishes are inside. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Let's let's all keep right. it going. We're two hours in. Difficult. All right. Are we going Sadiq? Not as no, no. partly that, bro. Don't partly dogs. I'm not. I'm not parlaying a plant flag. I already planted the flag for that. Fair. Um, Gage crickets in the chat, man. <laughs> Everybody, because Turner, Turner was a nice fucking money line. But nah, I don't like. I just only like the inside of this. It's like wow. because it's minus one seventy five. I think if we're if we're gonna two legs something, minus one seventy five, bro. It's, it's not even black. minus two fifty for his money. Seventy five. It's not like it's, it's, not like it's, like it's like minus three something. Right, right. This guy. Oh man, what I'm saying. It's a good. This is a good week to do it. Hey, just just stop, just stop, y'all. We got we got legs to go. Yeah, you're right. Second leg. Somebody throw out his second leg. Figueroa. Oh, these are I mean, you ain't gonna get a pushback from me, but I mean, I, I got I seem to get a lot of it. I right? like figure. Uh, I, I I will co-sign the Figueredo as being a base, because like I said, I bet him already, so my money's already spent. Let, let's let's fucking go. Let's. Well, hey, I really? love you weren't here for that part of the the, the show. What are you, what were your what are your thoughts on? He was. Here, he though? came in, cool. but you could put in Figgy as the base, and then from there you can add on any extensions, like a girl who getting her hair braided. <laughs> <laughs> Mel's has been fucking killing me on this one, dude. So that's um, the bait. Everybody's in agreement. Figueredo and Turner. Yes. Turner. Wait, what do you think? Yes, Billy? and majority is majority. If Billy's in the minority, hey, welcome to America. I mean, I uh, bless America. I, no, I, 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 what, what do you think, Billy? Arizona parlay, but you know how I feel about it, bro. This is not one of those type of weeks, bro. I'm telling you, you want to find. You you okay, want to. Well, all right, so Billy doesn't want to do the parlay part. We'll just. You don't. You see, so you don't want to do the parlay. I, said, I, I gave out the Jalen Turner piece. That was that was my piece. I said, let no, me go. That, yeah, that's fine. All right. Are you okay, down so, with the so bigger so piece or not? Cool. Okay. It could be worse. <laughs> are you are you cool with Figueroa? I'm not. I'm not saying you have to do this. I I really. I honestly just want to know. Hey, like, I'm not gonna, hey, no, folks, bro. folks, we're coming off. Of, we're coming off a of three and one last week. Uh, locker room par parlay. So let's let's keep it going. Uh, on this base right here and uh, get through it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go with that and then um. Uh, the only other, yeah, let's keep it going. What everybody else added what, their uh, what's your piece? I just want to like, minus, like I got bully someone, six, like, no, dude, he's got it. Yeah, I got what minus 116 for the, the base. The base is minus 116 with um Turner and um Figgy, Figurita, yeah. So you can literally do I anybody you really the, wanted. The inside the distance. <laughs> no, I no, it, it's a better line for sure. It's a better line for sure. Uh, all right, yep. Uh, I'm gonna go with Kayla Harrison for my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. There have been some look, fucking look, stingers look. today. Boys. Look, look, look. This, this is why, though. This is this is why everything else is literally kind of like a 50 50 thing to me, man. Like everything else, you know, even though I'm betting on other things, but everything else to me is 50 50 besides the Bobby Green. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm gonna just go ahead and give out Kayla Harrison because I think, um, Good. If all three of you guys ain't putting Rakic up in the fucking core, I'm putting Yuri as my pick. I was gonna go against you guys if you guys all you guys all were on the Rakic side. So besides me and TC, so if you guys ain't put him up, I'm gonna use Yuri as my piece since I already got Charles as the plant my flag. 
Sounds good. So now we just need uh, two cents to add in his leg and then uh, Billy to add in his leg. Fuck. Well, I already got I already got one parlay with Figgy and Justin in it. And I've got Figgy as the base of this parlay. So I think I'm good on Figgy and Justin. I tell you what, man, I was talking about it earlier. Uh, Mills, I think, just said the man's name. I, I was talking Taylor about Harrison. I know. <laughs> I owe. Hello. Man, everybody is fucking <laughs> on point today, dude. I did not Holy shit. Oh, all right. All right. Let me, I tell you what, dude. Let me, uh, there's been a lot of talk about wars and all this stuff and flags and battles. And uh, yeah, with all that shit, I think you need a king. So let me make mine uh, King Bobby Green. I think, Ooh, I think he fucking, I I think he fucking spoils the part. I think he spoils the Jim Miller 300 party. It just sounds like it might be a retirement spot. And I think people are forgetting about how nasty King Bobby Green is on the feed. And yeah, I think uh, he's going to knock Jim Miller out and say something crazy on the mic. So let's fucking go. That's my leg. UFC 300, baby. Ride or die. Love it. That's I got good. plus 186 on that one, TC. I love it. Let's fucking go. Billy, last up. Can I can I like customize mine? You could do whatever bit? you want because it's your leg. Yep. And the base is already hit. I'm sorry to be the uh you know, there's you always gotta to be apologize. Some guys you're black in the group that's gotta be fucking difficult. <laughs> but um I'm gonna be- <laughs> hey, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just sitting here bitching. I got, I got first world white people problems, so I have nothing to really complain about. I'm just talking shit. Uh, man, it's like I, I really feel. Are you gonna give a better? You just gonna sound like you constipated? God no, bless America. I really feel confident. Like my best bet of the card is really Jalen Turner ITD. I think that is the parlay piece. Huh? You get better. So it's the parlay. All right, Billy. It's the parlay piece. Give us the other piece. That's um, all I mean. Yeah. I'll put that on the graphic. You don't gotta. You don't gotta correlate with all three of us. Mills with the Kayla Harrison parlay is just I want it ITD wise. Oh, let's do it. You yeah, want yeah, Kayla yeah. ITD and Turner ITD? No, hey. Jalen Turner ITD, Kayla Harrison money. All right, what are you getting on that so I can write down the number? Just give me two seconds. You know, there's no, like- no problem. So that's so. Them are the parlays. We got biggest, uh, Bigarado and Turner. As the core, that's a minus 116. Already a good number for all of us. We got right. TC. Who was TC taking again? Hold on. King Bobby. Yeah, King yeah. Bobby. I wrote BG, yeah. so that's pretty hard to fucking understand in my handwriting. I took Yuri. I'm getting a plus 255. Mills taking Kayla. Let me see what that comes out to. Plus 136 quick. on mine. Plus 136. Yep. All right, like, my, mine's, mine's probably a little bit lower though, because you know a little personal bookie. But yeah, plus one thirty six or at least. Yeah, plus you got a you got a three man. Ding-ding. Oh, this dude! Shout out to Kayla Harrison, man. She said happy birthday to my daughter. Uh, shout out to her for the happy birthdays. Oh, hey, 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 thanks, yeah. thanks for full circle, man. Time See, you got a number yet? You say got a number you in this Kayla podcast? Harrison. Say what you want about Kayla Harrison. I would smash. <laughs> Why well, do this has been a wild one, gentlemen? No, I don't worry about one the for the card. ages. Make sure yeah. you'll get it by the by the time the graphics out for the card. So if you guys want to see the odds on that, man, check out the graphics that Big Show's gonna make. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna give it to him right now. He's got a minus one oh two. Minus one oh two with those? Yeah, so okay. you got a whole 14 cents. Billy yeah. Billy Billy Kayla or Cyborg. And, and we got and we got how many and we got the decisions. Though. Kayla, not even close. Yeah, She's exactly. three day in the morning. But shout well, out great, to everybody. Great episode, guys. Five, yeah. Yeah, we got, we got two hours and three minutes. Sorry, Mills, I'm cutting you off. I'm going to get her done pretty quick here. Mills, what do you got going on the rest of the week, and what's your favorite bet? Man, so we got a lot of PFL action going on. Look for my PFL clips coming out with Tom Breeze, Rob Wilkinson, and uh, Patricky Pitbull, or whatever the Pitbull brother is. Then check out something I'm going to do with Solomon Renfro. <laughs> Um, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do it. I, I might just do it, you know, later on tonight and do it on Instagram or something. I don't know, man. But check out my interview with Jalen Turner. Uh, you know, that's out there floating around on the websites out there. Just Google in MMA locker room interviews, Jalen Turner out there on the websites. That one's not on pub. Uh, my first time stepping out the comfort zone in that one. Uh, Billy Briz was back there producing with me. Shout out to him for that one. Uh, but besides that, got a lot of stuff coming out for you guys. So stay tuned at Pub Sports Radio this Saturday. We're giving out a hundred dollars. I'm going to be streaming live from the bar with my boy Curtis Millinder. Look and see who we might have uh, popping through, man. You never know, man. You know, fighters be out in the city. So check us out there. That big ass, man. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. TC, what do you got going on the rest of the week and where can they find you? And what's your favorite bet? 
Lord have mercy, the broad is thirsty. Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, shout out to all you gentlemen. This was a fucking kick ass episode, and I'm I'm just that much more excited for UFC 300. And best of luck to all you. Shout out to all the boys at Pub. Uh, I will be there Saturday trying to win that contest for the fucking fourth time, boys. You heard the man earlier. It couldn't be freer. It couldn't be easier. And Big Show told you where to sign up. So shit, just go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah. And um, my. Well, first of all, shout out. Uh, I got to shout out my dude, Aaron. Last week uh, or last night, rather, uh, was a was a great episode of his. You can find me there every Wednesday night. Um, Aaron, the dog MMA movie. It was a great podcast. I listen with you. Good yeah, podcast. yeah. He, he I, and I know Fernando was there and I know he's a friend of the pub as well. So uh, good to have him back around on, uh, on Aaron's channel. So that was a good one. Um, and also um, for me this week, uh, normally I would be doing a, a Saturday pregame, but I'm going to cover the weigh-ins tomorrow, and I will drop the link uh, for any of y'all, any of the boys at Pub, anyone I'm cool with. Uh, let me know if you want to come through. And, uh, yeah, just going to do a weigh-in show and shoot the shit and, yeah, do some more picks and stuff. But, yeah, man, shout-out to y'all. Best of luck, everyone. My favorite bet. <sighs> I kind of like the podcast parlay, boys. Like, I bet Figgy and Justin, that's like my – but my bias, like, kiss my ass. Like, I think these dudes are going to win. But, yeah, Bobby Green, Jalen Turner, and Figgy Fig mm -hmm. for plus money. I love it. That's my favorite bet this week. Best of luck, everyone. And, yeah, kick ass, boys. Let's go. Billy, what do you got going on the rest of the week? And what's your favorite bet? You already Where know, Bobby, over on IG at Billy Bridge DFS and over on it. Uh, X, as the kids call it nowadays, I get an underscore Bills underscore. Best bet of – I would just give you three bets real quick. Uh, underdog guy likes a DQ Seth, prop of the night, Jalen Turner, ITD, and um, straight better than night, Yuri Prakashka. You got the whole goddamn package. Shout out to everybody. Everybody listening on Talking Hands, if you're interested in a repeat or rewatch. If not, just go over and hit the like button. Leave a comment under once Pub uploads it. It should be around 9, 10 o'clock tonight, Eastern. Appreciate you all listening. Appreciate you boys for coming in here and hopping in and being in the sesh with us. Have a good weekend. Good luck on UFC 300. Cash all your bets. See you next week. Peace.